Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 567-0560. Call free for David Brower or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. I want to bang you in the butt, honey. Tonight on Let's Watch Animals Screw. It's a dicey situation for the intrepid wildlife crew as they inadvertently interrupt a wild gorilla in the mist orgy. Sound man Richard is mated with a 500-pound silverback male. Follow the couple as they register at Macy's and pick out a flatware pattern. It's all on tonight. Let's watch animals screw. Did he say there's a gorilla in our midst? Is that what he said? Uh-huh. I think I know who it is. Minute after 10 at 560 WQM. I'll tell you one thing. I came back a day too soon. Still got all this phlegm in my throat. I think it's phlegm. I think I got a problem here. But at any rate, uh, we'll get through if we stay on the air, if we can get anything working around here. So here's the uh, story. And by the way, I want to repeat my question. Is this WQAM or is it Channel 6? See, if they had some interesting people there on Channel 6 who might add anything to any of our programs, that would be uh, productive. But I'm driving to work this morning, and I hear some broad that works on there with Joe on, uh, I don't even know, some sports nerd broad. And uh, made no sense at all. And then I, and they're talking about Ike Siemens getting a new cell phone, so I'm assuming they already had him on once. And then I go out to take a leak about 9.30 here, and here's Ike Siemens again. This pathetic, tired, old hack. And that's a compliment in his case. Pathetic, old hack with his latest scoop. See, he finally got his head cleaned. Now, they had to take him to a professional cleaner to get his head cleaned after he pulled it out of Mickey Harrison's rectum. So now he's decided, well, let's stick my head in somebody Rectum. else's. Yeah, like John Henry. So now he's scoping out the new thing. They keep putting the same thing on the front page of your newspaper every day. The Sun Sentinel, they've, they've lost it. They must be walking around over there doing ish kabibble going yeah. like that. They're crazy. Crazy people. They weren't embarrassed enough putting the Don Smiley as buying the Marlins on the front page every goddamn day in both papers with Alan Snell and the Sun Sentinel and Barry Jackass and Harold. They weren't satisfied enough with that. So here's Ike Siemens again, breathlessly with his big scoop. Well, it's whoa, 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 whatever gives you the best deal. Old fuddy duddy, you sound like you got a mouthful of cotton or elephant <laughs> crap, okay? You're old and you're stale and you're tired, Ike. Go back where you came from, but NBC won't take you, will they? No. No. Terrible. And then, well, if they don't come up with any funding at all, we'll have a little more stale, but they won't have enough money to be competitive. Like, like, don't we already know that? I mean, have we even heard the same tired story a million times? Tired old hacks like John, like, like John Henry, a.k.a. Ike Seaman. Same person, I think. Same personality. So we, I, guess, I guess that's a new deal on the morning show now is they got uh, all the Channel 6 people on there. Well, they got to have somebody listening to them. They're sure not watching them on Channel 6. No. That's for goddamn sure with that insipid Tony Cigaretto and that other crowd they got over there. Ridiculous. So tell us something that we don't know, Ike Siemens, Mr. Great Investigative Journalist. Tell us something new. So at any rate, here's the deal. Thursday, I says to George, what I'm going to do, because we've had about four or five weeks of real psychosis, more so than usual around here, with the center one thing and with uh, the equipment, just nothing working in here anymore, just everything falling apart at the seams. Siemens. And so I says to George, I'm going to take a long weekend. I, if anybody needs a three-day weekend, it's me. I'm just mentally and physically, I'm just uh, wrung out from this joint. So I planned on playing a little hooky here on Friday, taking a sick day. Well, call whatever you want. Everybody does it. And so Thursday afternoon, I get on a plane. I'm not sick. I feel fine. I'm getting out of town. And, of course, at that time, little did I realize how totally you weather experts had blown it. Totally blew it. Every single one of you, you blew it. You're a disaster. You're a disgrace. Never even gave any inkling that it could be anything like what it turned out to be. Was I here for it? No. No. I had a nice, pleasant weekend. So I'm on a plane going up north on Air Canada. 30 minutes into the flight, I'm sitting in my seat, and all of a sudden I feel this, like, scratch in my throat. Now, I want, I want you to keep one thing in mind. You don't catch a head cold in a half an hour. You might get head in a half an hour, but you don't get a head cold in a half an hour, on a plane or otherwise. 
So the idea that I got sick because, you know, well, you know, God's punishing you, and if you wouldn't have been on that plane, I'd have still gotten sick anyway. I still would have had a head cold coming. So to make a long story short, here I am with a scratchy throat, a little bit head cold, not the end of the world, but uh, certainly can't talk, can't function too well. So I missed all the excitement. I wasn't here, not for one stinking minute of it including the excitement we had here, the embarrassment that I hear about. Everybody and their brother is telling me about the embarrassment that went on here on Friday in Greg Reed's sandbox. See, that's what this is. Not to be confused with the real radio station, this is Greg Reed's sandbox. How many times have I told you that? About 25 million, something like that? A bunch of little kids running around here playing games. Do we have, like, any, prof- any like you know, professionals? We have, like, Ken Malden. I don't know if Ken was here on Friday afternoon. He's an old pro, a news guy sports guy and we have a few adults who are on the air but other than that this is basically a sandbox with a bunch of little kids running around making little uh, noises going like that and so everybody i've spoken to says boy it's a damn good thing you weren't here on friday because if you would have been here you would have walked out about a half a dozen people have already told me that including our program director it's a storm greg it's a storm yeah it's a storm. It's a freaking hurricane, Greg. So to make a long story short, I come back Sunday evening, and I and, and there's basically no evidence that all of this happened. I saw it on CNN. I saw that they had this torrential storm and these uh, 15 and 20 inches of rain and the flooding all over the place and two and three feet of standing water and the horrible thing with those kids getting electrocuted, all of these things. Come back Sunday, get in my car at the airport, and drive home. There's no evidence of it. There, you know, there was some standing water in some of the what, what would you call it, on the uh, runways where they have the uh, grass, the grassy uh, things, lots, huh? Yeah, there was lots, Way of, over. lots of water. Whatever the hell they are, grass. There was you know pools of standing water on, but other than that, there was no evidence that anything had happened. I drive home out there to West Broward, where evidently it was a nightmare. And in my neck of the woods, there was some, you know, debris and a little bit of that. Not nothing uh, much. So I missed all the excitement. Missed the Bette Midler concert. Oh! Oh, like that. That bitch. Yeah, I might, I might do a couple hours on Cellar Door Productions. See, to me, there's a word for that. It's called scam. If I buy a ticket to an event, and the event is canceled, and then I find out that the promoter. Well, what's the line again here? It says, Cellar Door Florida generally doesn't issue refunds if an event oh, is not canceled. I see. Is not canceled. So wouldn't it have been sensible if we had a sensible performer and anybody with brains involved, uh, you know, manipulating this whole thing and running the operation? Wouldn't it have made sense to cancel it? Or at least to offer options of refunds or whatever to the public. No, no, you already bought your tickets, and she insists she's there. She's going to appear. And if we can get some crazy people to drive out here to the Mac Arena, if you're crazy enough to come out here, she'll get up there and sing this bitch. And then come to find out that there were people who bought the tickets. I won't mention any names like your close personal friend, Rumor. I won't mention him at all in the air. People who drove there on Friday through torrential rain, through feet of standing water, risking life and limb to see this fat bitch. And believe me, I liked her up until this. I always, you know, she, I could take her or leave her, but, you know, I liked her up until this moment. And then to be stalled around and wait around and, oh, well, guess what? It's been postponed. And have to drive home through all of this mess. And then they come back on Sunday night because they didn't want to lose the money. They had already paid for the tickets. Is that is that pathetic or what? Uh-huh. Huh? To me, see, you know what I look like? It's like I went to the track, I had a bad night. That would be the way I would look at it. I lost whatever I paid. If it was 150 bucks, 300 bucks, I had a bad night. Went to Vegas, had a bad half hour, 20 minutes. That's the way I would look at it. Some of you people must be insane that you would risk life and limb in a hurricane to drive to see Bette Midler or anybody else. Crazy people. 
Ten minutes after ten at five sixty WQA. No portion of this broadcast may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM Beasley Reed Acquisition Corp. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. <laughs> As prosecutor for the right, you're like a Nazi from the Ozark right. A pleasant anus to find anything, like women who like it in between. What's your problem, Kenny Star? Don't you think you've gone too far? Everybody thinks you are like Joseph McCarthy. Did you know that Joe McCarthy was gay? The kind of life you can't accept, he never paid. He kept right home, close by his side, until he got fired with broke and died. What's your problem, Kenny Starr? It's too bad Edward Burroughs gone. He would want to take you on, like Joseph McCarthy. Yes. Creep, 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 boy. Boy. Creep, 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 boy. Well, it only cost us $50 million, and he finally went away, but he brought in this other hack to make sure that we finished the job. $50 million. A lot of kids out there have no textbooks to take home, have no lunches at school time. There are people homeless on the streets with no food to eat. $50 million. Just like because the president got a couple of blowjobs and did a little bit of phone sex. $50 million. As your government keeps spending money like it's coming out of a fair faucet. So anyway, getting back to the nice job that you people in the media did here with that hurricane, with Irene. What did we say? We said, it looks like we could get a lot of rain. That's what they were telling us. A lot of rain, a little bit of wind. But when you look back on it, when you, what was the one that before Irene? I can't keep track of it. We got Jose sitting off there now just waiting. You can't remember what the one before Irene was, the one that was sitting right out there and we were all, everybody peeing in their pants and Al Sunshine was bitching out the business people because they stayed open that day and the mayor was hyperventilating with the uh, parrots on his shoulder and trying to get everybody all psychotic even though the sun was shining and the thing was already gone by. What the hell was the name of that hurricane? Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert? <laughs> Gilbert? <laughs> no laughing matter, mister. So whatever the hell that one was, I mean, you know, that thing sat out there, and they did the evacuation, and they got everybody whipped up into a frenzy, even long after it was very obvious that the eye of the hurricane was even with Lake Okeechobee and was well north of Dayton Broward County. Floyd. What was it? Floyd. Thank you. Thank you. And so now here we come here with Hurricane Irene, and yes, it did start very good. They didn't expect it to become a hurricane, and it did materialize very rapidly, but... But it seems to me that we had a couple of days, didn't we? It was way down near south of Cuba, and it was developing and turned into a hurricane at grade one and was coming up north. And they kept saying, well, it's going straight north, but it could go a little northwest. It could go a little northeast. Well, why didn't they, why didn't they focus in on that a little bit better? I think that's a question everybody should be asking today. All you weather guys out there. That's the question. Why did you blow it big time? There are people who live over on the ocean who were like having, uh, who didn't have their storm shutters up and weren't prepared, had water just pouring into their homes. People down in South Dade again, flooded all over the goddamn place. They're still bringing in supplies for those people because they can't get out because the roads are flooded. And they just blew it. And come to find out, I wasn't here on Friday, come to find out that uh, some of the channels were showing their soap operas again. So, you know, they're always talking about, well, where's the credibility going to be? Because we get everybody whipped up like with Floyd to a frenzy and evacuate, and nothing happens here. And we keep doing this over and over again. Now where's the credibility going to be? Because now we finally get something that does happen. And they're like uh, oblivious. They're oblivious. Really, a half-assed job. All you weather people out there, you sucked. You blew it. And as you look back, I mean, sure, hindsight is easy, but how far east did it have to move that it was obviously going to affect us? Especially since they kept telling us about the fact that the, the worst weather on these hurricanes is in the northeast quadrant. 
Isn't that what they're always telling us? Uh -huh. Yes. But they blew it. And somebody owes a goddamn explanation on this. And then there's the mayor again, and he's got Juan Mendy out of there to introduce him now, and he's parading out trying to make another goddamn media event out of this thing. Another photo opportunity. Why don't you face it, Mayor Pinga? You're an asshole, man. You're a little twerpy asshole. You have no credibility. Nobody believes anything you say. You're a jerk. Plain and simple, you're just a goddamn silly little jerk, and everybody in this town knows that. And now he's coming along. Oh, well, the president, I'm sure he's going to give us disaster funds. And be Just go shut up, okay? Just get lost somewhere. Go hide. Go back in your closet, in your broom closet, and hide. This town has had enough of you, man. You're pathetic. Just like these John Henry stories on the front page of the newspaper every goddamn day. It's like a disease. It's Marlin's disease. First it was Don Smiley Marlins disease. Now it's John Henry Stadium Marlins disease. Every time you turn around, both newspapers, they got Marlins disease. So we get tweeted again this morning on the front page of the Sun Sentinel, Marlins push for stadium support, and it's just a rehash of the same story they had in three times the last two weeks. Proposals still worry Lauderdale and Miami is the subheading. And two paragraphs is all you need to hear out of this story. The new ball, and, the, the, and I, haven't I told you this is the way that they do this to try to jam it down your throat? They don't, they don't, they don't ask. They don't just postulate like, well, they're floating a trial balloon. They don't do that. They say it like it's a fact. In other words, if we say it, it's going to happen. The new ballpark will either be in Bicentennial Park in Miami or in one of two downtown spots in Fort Lauderdale, team officials said. How do you like that? Then it goes on to say, now it's up to Marlins owner John Henry to persuade city and county officials to agree and pony up public financing for the estimated $400 million retractable roof ballpark. And you know what the answer is still? No. no. The new ballpark will be, uh, it's going to be over here. No. It's going to be over there. No. No, it's not. And they put it in your goddamn newspaper like it's a fact. You guys don't get the message, do you? They just got through less than a week ago printing that big poll in the newspaper, in the same paper. And no matter where the money is coming from, the overwhelming majority of the people say absolutely, positively, no. no. No way, Jose. And then the last paragraph in this 8 millionth and a 25 million part series says, we fully expect there are going to be obstacles to overcome politically in the community and financially, but it's early in the process, says Jonathan Mariner, Marlin Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. We've yet to fully develop our campaign, our vision. Well, I think they better go see an ophthalmologist because their vision is very cloudy. They can't see the forest for the trees. They can't see the finger. It's not Mike Ditka's finger. It's everybody's collective finger in this community being held right up in the air, that middle digit, giving John Henry the message. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. That's the message. You are crazy. It isn't going to happen, mister. Take your goddamn Little League ball club, pack it up, and go to Ashtabula and get out of our face. Go away, you silly person, you. You twit. The people here are going to important things, like the Bette Midler concert in the middle of a goddamn hurricane. That, that's what's got the people here whipped up to a frenzy. By the way, don't forget, uh, pizza loft, not tonight. I don't want people showing up there tonight and maybe pulling a Bette Midler. I already announced it. No, no, seriously, that would be bad. Next Tuesday, a week from tonight, the 26, 6 to 8 p.m., we'll be at the pizza loft. And the new CDs, the replaceable ones, the new ones, the okay-sounding great ones, they were in today. In fact, they'll be in the spec store starting today, later on, which we'll let you know when. Am I right about that? I hope. They'll be, uh, assuming that people pitch in, they'll be getting there today. They'll pitch in. Believe me, they'll pitch in. So I, I would wait till tomorrow, but at any rate, so we are fine. I mean, it's only the 19th of October. We've lost only like uh, almost three weeks in a month, but we'll do the best we can. This, you know, this thing makes no sense to me. Here's a mobile in, uh, and now that we have punched it up, it disappears. Hello? Hello? Can't hear you. I, I hear you like a million miles away in the background. Okay, so here we go. We take the first call. Now, I haven't even set the stage for this phone thing yet. Now, now what is that? He's still talking, and I've already punched it. 
He's still, I can't punch him off. I can't get rid of this guy. The uh, Hold on, sir. Hold on. Hello? No. We're, we're, we're dead. We're, we're dead in the water here. I come out of a sick bed. I mean, you know, I feel fair. I got you know, a messed up head and a scratchy throat. I got a head cold. That's all. I've had a lot worse. And the phone system don't work. Because our engineer, the other one finally fried. You see, instead of solving these phone problems that have been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and maybe bringing in some extra engineering help and having to actually pay them oh my God. to do some work to get this all straightened out and make this a real radio station, I'll try another one, but I have no reason to assume it's going to work. Here's a mobile in Weston. Hello. The thing goes black in here, and they're not on the air. Let me try resetting it and see if that works. You want to do that during a break? I, I, you know something? I don't care. I really don't care. I can sit and do the next three and a half hours just on this place. I thought we didn't have to do that anymore. I thought that was the whole purpose. We didn't have to reboot the goddamn computer that he put this new thing in here. We've got a new goddamn screen in here that I'm supposed to read where the calls are from. If I had a goddamn... I'm sitting eight inches. Okay, maybe a foot. Let's let's be generous and say it's a foot from this computer screen, okay? I have excellent vision. My glasses are on. Even without my glasses, I read, okay? I couldn't read the numbers on these lines if you put a goddamn Uzi in my Rectum. okay? That's the kind of joke that we have here for engineering at WQAM, or is this Channel 6, whatever this is. This is unbelievable. What did I tell you? As soon as I came on this morning, well, the first thing I said, I came back a day too soon. Maybe I came back a month too soon. It's only supposed to be a sports and talk radio station, and we can't put phone calls on the air. What were the only two radio stations that went off the air last Friday, I'm informed, in the entire market during the hurricane? Power 96 and WQAM. Oh. All right. At least we're unique, okay? I'm not saying there anybody else out there would like to be like us, but we're unique. I don't, I don't want you. Why are you doing that? Uh, try it just uh, for kicks. Here's a mobile in. Uh, oh yeah. It's hey, working. did you see any of the Little League World Series? Thing? Yeah, uh -huh. that's that same asshole I called uh, this morning. But at least we got the phone working. Nice going there, George. We had to reboot the phone. You see, we still have to do that. But at least there's some hope, a little bit of ray of hope. 27 after 10 at 560 QAM. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rambo 4 and 5. Uh, how are you? Uh, John Rambo's still alive. I want to make movies 4 and 5. My life ain't going great, planet Hollywood's broke. Unfortunately, I speak like I had a stroke. First blood came in 82, that's when I hurt my penis and it never ever grew. Rambo 2 was in 85 late, and uh, Rambo 3 was in 88. Shooting, and shooting, and shooting, my gun. I did not make this movie with my son. Uh, his name is Sage, he was in Rocky 5 in Daylight, the tunnel movie. A little bit of cash is what I need, I gotta get a loan from Apollo Creed. I gotta have another hit movie, or a Broadway show like Denahi. I guess nobody ever saw Copland. It was stupid. I guess I understand. My whole life is about to cave in. All I got left is Jennifer Flavin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I need to make Rambo foreign. Bye. <laughs> Check it out, so call me up. I really need a script. I can do dialogue or keep it zipped. I like comedy, action, adventure, and drama. The, the only thing I will not do is have sex with a llama. So give me a break, for goodness sake. I used to be on Oprah, now I can't get on Ricky Lake. Right now I got a one-man show in Poughkeepsie. Basically, I'm an unemployed gypsy. A little bit of cash is what I need. I gotta get a loan from Apollo Creed. I gotta have another hit movie. Or a Broadway show like Meta <laughs> I guess nobody ever saw Copland. <laughs> it was stupid, so I understand. My whole life's about to cave in. All I got left is Jennifer Flavin. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I need to make Rambo boring.
Absolutely. Pet 34, 560 WQM, your absolutely unacceptable station for the 90s. So Greg Reed was just in here going, yeah. uh, did you notice where you watch it? I was explaining. I was sitting here screaming and yelling. And by the way, it had good effect. My left ear just opened up. Let's hear it. My left ear just opened up for the first time in four days. Oh. Boy, that's a maddening thing. I don't want to go through that business about when you have a head cold and your ears plug up and you can't hear a goddamn thing. You know what I'm saying? What? But at any rate, I'm sitting here and I'm screaming and I'm going on about this phone thing and about this crap that we're expected to work with in this make-believe studio. And he sticks his I'm, – I'm, say, I said to him, can you read the numbers on this program we have on this computer that's supposed to tell us which line is what? And he sticks his head on the goddamn screen and still can't read it. He's sticking his head on the goddamn screen in here. I wish you could have seen it. I wish we had tape at 11. Rick Sanchez would have been impressed. And he still can't read it. Well, you know, it's easy to say that we're cheap, but we want to get these things fixed. Well, you know, he's, uh, the engineer's got a commitment. Get somebody in here that can do it, okay? If he can't do it, get a real engineer in here who knows how to put stuff in that works. Not Mickey Mouse, not uh, Scotch Tape, not Make Believe. Everything here is jury-rigged. Everything here is like taped together, like the goddamn uh, thing you were telling me with the generator. They had to bring in a goddamn kiss generator on Friday. Oh, no, the van. I beg your pardon? And the gen- well, two things. Oh, my! now it really opened up wide in what? my ear, too. Oh. All right, let's hear it. My ear open. Put it on the front page of the paper instead of these stupid stories about the Marlins. Yes, I'm sorry. What would you say? A gas generator and the kiss van. Yeah. To kiss what? This. Kiss this. And we and they still went off the air eight million times on Friday, including from what you tell me from two o'clock to an undisclosed time that we know has got to be after four thirty, but we don't know what time they finally came back on and if Hank was on at all. Okay, let's see if these phones work. Here's a mobile in uh, the Gables. Hello. Hey Neil. There you go. Listen, got a question for you. Yeah. For, for, forget about these incompetent bureaucrats. Um, I've been on the Atkins for about a, six weeks now. Yeah. Well, the American Dietetic Association is very upset with you, sir, because now they're on their big, as if they know anything about anything, which they don't, but anyway. Yeah, they don't know anything. They're very upset because people keep losing weight on the Atkins, and his book is still selling like hotcakes. But I, I will say this. I've lost about 20 pounds. Yeah. And uh, I'm starting not to lose any weight anymore. I'm getting nervous. You're in a That's plateau. Just just keep uh, rolling along, pal. Just keep, keep doing going, it. Keep going, huh? Just keep Get going. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'm sorry. All right. Kick well, him in the head. To... Thanks a lot, Neil. I appreciate it. Just kick it up and uh, kick it up and keep it up. Like uh, Emerald says, kick it up a notch. Oh, seriously, the American, I'm glad he mentioned that, American Dietetic Association comes out with this thing, and everybody should know that as soon as they tell you it's either the American Diabetes Association or the American Dietetic Association, they're absolutely, positively full of pure, unadulterated crap. crap. They haven't got any idea what they're talking about. And the one guy from the American Dietetic Association says, oh, well, you know, grains are where it's at. You know, the the whole world uh, functions on grains. And like Dr. Atkins says, when you want to fatten up cattle, what do they feed them? Grains. What makes people fat? Refined carbohydrates, bread, pasta, starch. Grains make people fat. Not meat, not chicken, not turkey, not eggs, not butter, not cheese. Grains make people fat. And so now they're, you know, this is their latest attempt. And of course, where were they when all this low fat business was coming out? That now 55%, 55% of the population is obese and the number is growing dramatically. Everywhere you look, there are puppets everywhere. There's a guy got in a plane with me on Thursday. I have no idea how this guy got his ass in the seat. This guy should have had to buy a row. I'm talking about not a row with two seats, but one with three seats. And somehow they managed to squeeze his ass on there with a goddamn shoehorn, I guess. And the American Dietetic Association, which are such great experts along with your physicians out there, such geniuses, oh, yeah, they're poo-pooing the Atkins diet. In the meantime, have we seen any evidence of what they're claiming? Have we seen people dying from the Atkins diet? No. I I haven't read about any of them. I'm not saying it works for everybody, but the people who are on it, most of them seem to be losing weight. They had a physician on there on the piece I saw last night on the news. 
We have a lot of doctors who believe in the Atkins, who put their patients on the Atkins. When I go to the hockey games, there's a heart doctor, a cardiologist, sits there in the row in front of me, a few seats down. He's uh, lost a lot of weight on the Atkins and puts his patients on the Atkins. He understands it. He understands how it works. He understands what it's all about. But the American Dietetic Association, a bunch of registered nutritionists and dietitians who ought to be in jail for uh, for fraud, by the way, they're giving everybody a song and a dance to try to scare them on the Atkins. Give it to them, Bobby. Oh. Stick it to them, baby. Bunch of frauds and fakers. It's because of people like you with your goddamn grains. That's why 55% of us are walking around like a bunch of goddamn pigs. That's right. When they want when they want to fatten up the cattle, they feed them grains. Don't ever forget it. Works like a charm every time, by the way. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM. No, don't be sorry, Joe. No, no, seriously, this, this is not, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I may go off until two o'clock and just ramble here. This is not a real place. This place is so out of control right now that they're gonna bring in guys with little butterfly nets. You better bring in the guys with the big butterfly nets, okay? I, you know, I have all these people, all of these sponsors, I've worked for years to build up where I am today, 23 years in this market. And these people, I'm, I'm sitting here, it's like they're destroying me. Here is a piece of copy that is single spaced at minimum, minimum, with even a marginally fast reading three minute piece of copy. And at the end, for my good friends at Lou Back wrote this piece of, and no wonder Adam Silverstein sent Fat Boy up here with us the other day, because he'd be too embarrassed to hand me this piece of crap. And at the end, the little disclaimer that goes on there at the end, which you kind of read fast, price based on a 36 month lease with $2,800 cash down plus tax, tag and security deposit for complete details. And that's the end. Plus tax, tax, and security deposit for complete details. Does anybody read this before they hand it to us? Does anybody look at this to see if it's coherent or it's just a bunch, as many words as they can put on a page? That's our sales department's idea now of copy. How many words can we put on a piece of paper? And our general manager is walking around sticking his head up to this screen here. Putting his head, putting his face on the computer screen. Making guttural sounds. Yeah. Oh, gee, you're right. Can't read that. <laughs> I guess I have to go talk to George Corso. <laughs> how did we get this far? How, how did we make it this far, you know? Really? It's, it's a miracle. It's one, you talk about the great seven wonders of the world. This is one of the all-time miracles in history. I just, I can't, I'm speechless. I haven't been on an hour yet, and I'm already ready for a, for a breakdown here today. Things are much better today than they were the past two. Hey, that's what I hear. That's what I said. On Friday, everybody I've talked to, including you, has said, if you came in Friday, you would have walked out. I was close to walking out 1030. Even yesterday, at least writing shows up on the screen today. Yeah. All we had were colored boxes yesterday with no writing on them. Because you have an engineer who puts things in and doesn't make sure they work before he walks out the door. Just like the day that he messed up our DCS that's got maybe 15 years worth of material in there. And decided in the middle of August or whenever it was, a couple of months ago, he's going to make sure it's ready for the year 2000. Did we need to have it potskied around then in August? No. No. Did he call the manufacturer of this uh, uh, system to find out how to do it to make sure that we don't wind up getting all losing all this stuff when we change the year to do that? No. No. And so George had to crawl around on the floor for about 20 minutes, rebooting this computer and rebooting that one, and potskying around to put the thing back together again so we could make noises like yeah. like that. Which, when you work here, you've got to be able to go yeah. like that. It's, it's, it's definitive. That's the QAM logo, the motto. I mean, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm, I'm, but after a while, all excuses. Well, he's overworked, and he's—I don't care. All I know is that this room here, that I do this radio show in for the last several weeks, is a, a disaster and disintegrating rapidly. It's getting worse by the minute. We have to go through a song and a dance on a talk radio station to put a phone call on the air. 
And Greg Reed can stand here and give me a song that that's all he wants about how, oh, it's not because they're cheap. They're willing to spend whatever it takes. I got news for you, Mr. Reed. There's plenty of good engineers in this town who work on the side, who work by the hour, just like they did for Paxson, who will come in here and get things working right that are supposed to be in here, not a piece, not, not a jury-rigged piece of turd that George Corso sticks in here and then expects us to do a go on here and make magic with. I shouldn't have said magic. Maybe he'll be working over there next week. We can only hope. Every single thing that goes on here is a major, long, tortuous thing. You ought to see the construction project that's going up here on the third floor. Is it done yet? Yeah. Piecemeal. I think they're paying them by the minute, not by the hour. I think they're paying the contractors by the minute. It's like the day that the air conditioner went out 10 days ago. Every single thing that could break down in a place of business, every single thing has has done wrong in the last three, four weeks here. Everything. Not just most things. Every goddamn thing. Because you people over there in Naples, the Beasleys, who are giving all your money to John Henry and Wayne Hypinga, you people that we work our asses off here all day long, every day, trying to grind all these spots through to make you the money so you can afford to be Mr. Big Shot Sports Guys. You're an embarrassment. You're humiliating. You just don't want to cut loose and give us what we need. How many days in a row did we have? Line four doesn't work. Line seven doesn't work. Line eight is howling like Wolfman Jack. Every goddamn time you turn around, it's another joke. And the audience, I think, tunes in just out of a sense of sadism. Let's see what kind of an ordeal it's going to be there. And usually they don't get disappointed. We never let you down. Only some of us aren't going to survive much longer of this. That's why I got on a plane Thursday afternoon with the hopes of getting out of here, and at least I uh, survived. I did the right thing by any accounts. Uh -huh. You bet. Avoided the storm and avoided more QAM embarrassment, at least up until today. They don't get it. These people are not broadcasters. They're wannabes. They're make-believe. They're ersatz. Sports bar with a microphone would be a compliment. That would be an exaggeration. I'm driving out of here to the airport on Thursday. Hank, Beefo, and Ed Kaplan are doing their show from Calder. And I'm listening, and they're going back and forth. And, bop, 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 beep. and the first call, the first call on his sports bar with a microphone is... Hey, guys, what do you think of Buffalo against Oakland minus three and a half? And I got the CD into my player so fast. <clears throat> You've never seen an old fag move so fast in your life. <coughs> Here's Deerfield Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. I love your show. Can't hear this caller. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yes, I love your call. I'm a, I love your show. I'm a first-time caller. And uh, I just wanted to say that you thought the meteorologist did a bad job. You should have seen Rick Sanchez hyperventilate, hyperventilating after uh, Bill Kamal told him the hurricane was coming this way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. After Bill said that we were going to feel the effects from Irene, Rick Sanchez asked another Emmy Award-winning question. He said, Bill, now that we know it's coming our, this way for sure, is there anything in your power that you can do to make this go away? <laughs> and Bill... <laughs> oh, I'm gagging on it. That's beautiful. And Bill, in disbelief, looked at Rick and said, yes, I can blow really hard to the West. Oh, yeah. Yes, and believe so. me, in his case, I think he's being honest about it. Exactly. Well, I love your show, and I just had to get that on the air. Thank you, sir. I needed to laugh. Thanks a lot. Okay, no problem. Okay. Bye. No, I never thought it would give me to laugh today. Yeah, I, I think I might do the whole show through this. Day. Hey, it would fit in with it. With the ambiance is perfect. WQAM, where we can't get anything right. By the way, how is that OJ-related expense money coming from that golf tournament? Anybody uh, no. about that? I, I'm sorry, my, I, I don't. I just. I, what am I doing here? I just uh, need to lay down somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. My head is just swimming. 
If you if you could have told me that this could happen again today, I would have said, oh, yeah, what a kidder. That we could go through this embarrassment again today. Just to put a radio show on. We've been doing this here for two effing years. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, effing October. Almost eight months in this room. And sure, there have been, uh, you know, we had problems in the beginning because the boss, being a, a liar that he is, he got in a plane and ran off to Chicago because he knew that we didn't have the equipment ready yet and we knew it would probably be a disaster, and it was. So he bailed out. He went into hiding. Yeah, when things get tough, the uh, cowardly uh, go into hiding. But somehow we managed to survive through that, had that initial gigantic rating book, and somehow for two years, don't ask me how, with mirrors, I guess, we've had these tremendous numbers, all these spots. And up until a couple of months ago, most of the stuff in here worked most of the time. Am I right? Am I, am I losing it? Most, I mean, it wasn't great. But when we came in in the morning, most days, as long as George remembered to reboot the phone system after a while, after that started breaking down, but as long as that happened, we could get the calls on a year, we could do a radio show. But for some strange reason here, the last several weeks, every day, it's impossible to do a show at WQM in this room. And then I, over the weekend, I guess they had to play all tapes because they couldn't get uh, any shows on a year or something. I, I don't know what that was all about. That's what I hear. And the general manager is walking around going, yeah. tell me, calm down, calm down. I don't want you to get excited. Not, you know, calm down. You come in here doing a show on calm down. We'll see how long you'll do it, okay? Mr. Sports Maven, Mr. Mogul, Mr. Genius, Mr. Rocket Scientist. Yeah. Not even, it's just coming up on 11 o'clock. I feel like I've done an 85-mile marathon already. And still can't read these numbers, by the way. Here's Fort Myers. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. At least you're still alive. Yeah. Um, funny, funny thing is, um, I wear one of your Ghost and Neil t-shirts around here. Yeah. And at, at least one time, every time I wear it, there's got somebody coming up to me going, that's what Neil looks like, huh? But the reason I called was, um, <laughs> you said um, you will be selling the CDs in Fort Myers here at the Specs here locally? Yes, sir. Any day now. We'll let you know. Okay, and another thing is, um, what's with the center one, uh, Neil Hotline? I've called it like three or four times. It's just been an answering machine. Every time I left my name, center one Neil Hotline. What the hell is that? It's some night line you have on the web page. It's like where you can where you can order it, order your stuff on uh, the phone. Yeah. It's always an answering machine. I left like three or four messages, and they never call back. Do you know anything about that? Probably because they're waiting for the disc to show up. Yeah, they maybe, maybe it's that. in limbo because we didn't have the stuff yet. Okay, well, that's just what I was calling about, so uh, keep it up, buddy. Okay, thanks a lot, pal. Yeah, the stuff will be in Fort Myers. It'll be in all the specs in the next couple of days, we hope. Oh, and also the uh, the keychains with the buttons and all that. I don't want to talk about those until I have one. Don't get me started on the center one thing, okay? Because I do my best every year. But I, I would like to have this stuff in my hand, and let me say it again. In retrospect, thank the Lord. Thank oh, God that I asked Bluff to go over and give me that one CD that day when we did the thing in Specs and had that tremendous appearance. Because if I wouldn't listen to it by now, can you even begin to imagine the catastrophe? Even the Japanese never saw a bomb like that. Ten fifty six at five sixty. WQAM. WQAM, Miami, Fort This station stands for nothing. Dear Pants, <laughs> I don't think I'd like you anymore. <laughs> you used to watch me shave. Now you do is stare at the floor. <laughs> oh, dear Pants, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> Used to be you and me, a paper towel and a dirty magazine. <laughs> That's all we needed to get by. <laughs> now it seems things have changed, and I think that you're the one who blamed their paints. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> he sings. 
beer, Rodney. <laughs> I don't think I'd like you anymore. Because when you get to drinking, you put me places I've never been before, dear Rodney. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> Why can't we just get a grip on our man-to-hand relationship? <laughs> Come to terms with truly how we feel. If we put our heads together, we just stay home forever. <laughs> Dear penis, I think I like you after all. Oh, and Rodney, while you're shaving, shave my home. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Hank at the Cool City today, so he'll probably be on. Well, you can never be too sure. Sometimes those outside remotes don't get on here. But it's better than being in here, if you know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Then we got the, the booster before uh, baseball. Mets at the Braves for game number six tonight in Atlanta. Maybe they'll actually sell out. I think they sold out that game finally. Okay, a lot of open lines. We had a whole bunch of calls on there before, and they either dropped off, or at this point, who knows, you know, a little paranoid with this phone system, but we'll just press along. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hello, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. Listen, I got it's a little, kind of a spiral report. I know you own a home. I know you have a lot of homeowners that listen to you guys, and you guys shop at Home Depot. I just want to tell you something. If you guys shop at Home Depot and you, you come up with an item that you don't need and you got to return it, they're going to ask you for your ID. And you know what they're going to do your ID? They're going to give it to the cop standing on, on duty, and he's going to run your license to see if you have any outstanding warrants or traffic tickets or anything. So there are a bunch of douchebags over there and shop at Lowe's. I got inside info. If you don't believe it, go to, go to the Oakwood Plaza Home Depot. They're going to ask you for your ID, and they're going to try to run your license and get you arrested. Okay, we'll try to bail you out. Okay, there's a guy, probably a jailbird. I guess if you look like some, you know, ordinary guy who's bringing something back, they probably won't run their license, your license away. No. No, but if you look like somebody who just, uh, you know, is selling speakers in the parking lot, they might just run your license. And don't be knocking Home Depot, okay? I got a lot of Home Depot stock. We love Home Depot, don't we? Yes. Yeah, there you go. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's Boca. Hello. Okay, nice talking to you, too. Here's the mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, why do you always make fun of Mario Pinellas? What does that question mean, sir? I mean, I know. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Anybody got anything to say today about the hurricane, about the weather people, about Bette Midler, about any of the stuff I've been talking about? Now is the time, because if it ain't going to happen now, believe me, the music comes out. Trust me when I tell you. So it's uh, up to you guys. Here's the lady in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe we can all get a group rate on flooded. Can't hear you. Can't hear this caller worth the uh, crap. Maybe we can all get... Now, can you hear me? Yeah. Now, uh, I'm lying down as you recommended. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Yeah. So you should have them put a couch in there instead of whatever you're sitting Yeah, on. We, we, need a, we need a psychiatrist in this place. This is a bunch of crazy people. Trust me, the psychiatrists are the, all the crazy. Sales department the, is out of, the, the sales department is totally out of control. They haven't got the foggiest idea. They, they could be selling shoes on a street corner for all uh, they know. They don't even understand what this place is all about. So what do you want from people who work for money? Yeah. <laughs> Next time I'm going to be born rich. I'm glad you, met, you mentioned uh, your stock investments because I'm calling about a, a stock tip. I know you'll want to run out and invest or go for your E-Trade or whatever. Mm-hmm. Did you hear Martha Stewart went IPO this morning? Really? Yeah. And? You know what IPOs are, don't you? Need yes. To yeah. Yes. So she's, uh, if you want to run out and buy her stock, which I do not recommend. <laughs> Okay, thanks, sweetheart. You're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, okay, there you go. Martha Stewart, stay the hell away. And she smells bad too, by the way. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hey Neil, how are you today? Great. Never been better, sir. <laughs> Let me ask you one quick question before I want to talk about something else. Yes. When was the last time you guys had a like a completely glitch-free show? It seems like I, my memory isn't that good. Uh, exactly. What I wanted to talk about was this uh, this whole thing with the coverage of the hurricanes between the the Floyd and this last one. 
you know, it's been my observation, first of all, the cable goes out pretty quickly, and then the power goes out, and you've got, I, I just think it's such a waste of money when you think about, you got this, I think like four different, I think 39 does some, does a broadcast of it too. You got four different stations just spending tons of money to cover the same thing that their only source of information is from the National Hurricane Center. It's not like they can outscoop each other on a story. I just think that, that it's just a, what a waste of money. To, to you, you don't understand. You say a waste of money. These people already are on their payroll. They're already getting paid. They're, they're, they're doing it for ratings. They're not doing it as a community service. They're doing it to try to see who can be the biggest uh, hero, like uh, Brian Norcross, in times of national disaster, and to try to goose their ratings up. That's what they're doing it for. Well, you know, and, and they, they they're do... They're not spending money because they want to be benevolent and uh, protect the community. That's a bunch of bull crap. Well, they do. I mean, you, you see now, I, I think I saw one on... Uh, Channel 6, the NBC affiliate has a promo, we covered the storm the best because of experience and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because they got an old fart like Ike Siemens in the newsroom who keeps calling up the morning show on QAM making a fool out of himself. With a bad cell phone. Right. <laughs> but I, with, I, with a bulletin that uh, John Henry wants to build a stadium. But All right, Neil, but anyway, that's, that's, that's just the point. I just think it's just a total waste. I think it's ridiculous. Well, but you, you see, you're looking at a perfect world. You're looking at the world where the media is supposed to be here to serve us and pass information along, and it could just all pipe in, as you say, to the National Hurricane Center, which did a crappy job in this case anyway. But nevertheless, they could just pipe that in and put it on there and without all the histrionics and without the people jumping up and down. Well, but that's uh, not what they're there for. Well, they're for ratings. Well, with, but, but you see, this country is built on the idea of competition, and that's why they, that's why they they do this. It's all about what you're saying. We did it. We did the best job. We're the heroes. That kind of thing. And and you see, in in certain things, people in this country have to realize that competition isn't always isn't always good. I know that's like if you say that, it's like Sir, you're just repeating yourself. It's not going to change. There, it's cutthroat. They're out there to you know to get the ratings and to uh, steal the audience. That's what they're out to do. Here's a fact that says absolutely no one has uh, mentioned the fact that thousands of children in Dayton Broward County would have been in danger if there wouldn't have been a teacher's work day for a no school for students on Friday. See, I wasn't here. I wasn't even aware of that. Many kids don't get released from school until late afternoon, right on time for these kids who have gotten wiped out on Friday. The hurricane center blows, so says the facts. Nice going there, sir, ma'am, whoever that was. Good point. Thank the Lord. Thank Neil, God that it was the teacher's work day on Friday and the kids were out of school. Because once again, the media just, uh, you know, fumbling all around, all over the place, and they just can't get it right. And how come with Floyd, it was like, well, we can't be absolutely sure, but let's do this and let's do that and take the precaution. And with this one, when we already knew that it was going to come, and the very least, the eye of the hurricane was going to pass on the west coast of Florida, and if it went a little bit to the northeast, could come right by here. Why wasn't there a little bit more uh, caution involved in this one? Can anybody answer that question? No. Oh. Nine minutes after 11 at 560 WQAM. I've got two sets of lips. Two boobs can be lots of fun. All right. I think I'll see the Twitter brand and I think I'll get off. Double D's think I'll come. She's got me humping, pumping with all of my clothes off. Double D's think I'll come. I'm so erect any minute I'll go. She's giving me one hell of a titty show. Well, I'm in titty heaven, gonna have some fun. And the best part about it is she once was a nun. Well, I'm in titty heaven, getting down on the couch. Well, I'm in titty heaven, got them both in my mouth. Two boobs can be lots of fun. Two boobs can eat lots of fun. <laughs> 1114 is 560QM. So another uh, amazing thing. All i got to do uh, is get sick a couple of days, and right away the, the roof caves in. Come to find out that Brooke Daniels, with her point uh, zero 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 share of the audience, yesterday said the F word on the air intentionally and didn't dump it and then the producer gets suspended because she says it on the air and the producer didn't dump it larry the producer whoever the hell that is over there and i don't know what they're worried about nobody would hear it anyway on that show <laughs> except for john penis who says he can't turn it off because he never heard anything so bad in his life what was the purpose of that why did she say the f word on the air 
was she was distraught about the boyfriend who left her. Poopy? Whatever its name was? Now, that's a whole different ball of wax, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> only in Miami, folks. Just like Mandy says, only in the Banana Republic, only in Miami. Because this, could this bitch be on the ear? See, now it comes a little bit, now it's starting to get a little bit hairy for me with these numbers, okay? When they get the... Uh, here's Miami Beach. Hello. Yes, hi, Neil. How are you doing? Okay, sir. Never better. Okay, Neil. Just want to say a few kind Maybe. words for the weather department. They were right. About what? We didn't have hurricane winds here in Dade County. Maximum sustained winds in Miami Beach, which I think were the highest just about anywhere, were only 60 miles per hour. Oh, what a bargain. They did issue tropical storm warnings uh -huh. for Dade County. Yeah. Now, if the government officials don't uh, read the advisories and don't heed the warning, that's their fault. But the Weather Bureau, they should. They were right in not issuing hurricane warnings for the beach. We didn't have hurricane winds. Maybe people are underestimating what a tropical storm can do. Sir, sir, when the weather people come on the air, when they come on the air and they describe, that's supposed to be their job. They're meteorologists, most of them. And that's supposed to be their job is to explain to the public what the dangers are. We're not talking about semantics. Is it a tropical storm? Is it a hurricane? How much rain could we potentially have? How serious could the flooding be? How much danger are we in? How much of a storm? It doesn't make any difference what the semantics are. Well, the, they blew it. If you if, they blew it. If you've got a beef with the local weathermen on TV, then you may be right. But the but the hurricane, uh, sir, you can keep telling me about the hurricane center from now until the cows come home. But nobody watches the hurricane center. They're all getting the news from the news people on their local TV channels, and you know that as well as I do. So go uh, float in a hurricane. God, my pedantic friend. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the eight. You know, people could be drowning out there. Maybe some of them are right now. There's still people who are like uh, stranded. And this guy's giving us a semantical. Well, you know, technically the hurricane center was correct, and I har get lost. Go away. You give me mental hemorrhoids. Okay, they blew it. They sucked. They stunk. They get all hysterical about the one. And we sat here. We watch Floyd. We watch it pass by. We're all singing, sometimes I think there's hurricanes passing us by, and it did. It did. And there's that little mayor on there. Oh, you're not, you're not getting hysterical. Yeah, I want you to get hysterical. I want to win some brownie points on this. You already got enough brownie points already, Mr. Brownie Hound, you piece of crap. And so they're just, there is no credibility here anymore. The weather people have totally lost their credibility. They zig when they should zag. They zag when they should zig. In the meantime, the public doesn't know whether to scream or go see the Bette Midler concert. Which I still have nobody who's called the show yet because you're all too embarrassed that you went. And I'd be embarrassed too. If it would have been a goddamn Backstreet Boys concert, and I have these tickets in my pocket for the front row, and it would have been like the weather was here Friday, and I live four minutes from the arena, and they would have said, oh, guess what, they're still going to appear, would I have gone? No. No, of course not. <coughs> of course not. You'd have had to be a crazy person to go there. Unless maybe you had some hip boots, since you know that the parking lot there floods. They have no drainage there, both at the Sawgrass Mills Outlet Mall and at the Mac Arena. No, so, no drainage at all. So why the hell not take a little rowboat and your hip boots and go over and see that fat bit, uh, uh, bitch bet Midler? The more I think about that bitch, self-serving, arrogant, obnoxious bitch, and then they went back to watch her Sunday night. Oh, she was great. Pumped to her. Okay, that's what I say. Here's a mobile in Sunrise. Hello. Mobile in Sunrise. Yeah, Neil? Yes, sir. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, I just want to say that the weatherman this town sucks big, okay? Okay, thanks. Work. Okay, thanks. They suck. Well, we know that. In fact, I could give you some names specifically, but we better not. They suck a lot. How's that? Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil? Yes, sir. There's an article in uh, this morning's Herald, Section B. Official brought two guns to MIA. I have it right here. Did you read that? I have I read it. Demetrio I have it. Perez, it's, uh, Miami Dade School Board Vice Chairman Demetrio right. Perez. Yes. Carries two guns to the uh, to the airport. He's an asshole. And man. it says and it says here the state's attorney. We have to evaluate whether the ex whether the incident was accidental or intentional. Yeah. What the hell is this? 
Well, Accidentally. Maybe, touched, maybe the guns got in there by themselves. Maybe he didn't put them in have there. legs these days, right? Right, that's right. I'm telling you. And this guy is going to Tallahassee to meet with legislators mm -hmm. to discuss. Putting uh, metal detectors in schools. He's the guy that was instrumental here in Dade County for it. Right. Only in the Banana Republic. Well, I guess he's just doing a little test, you know. He's doing a little road work. He wants to make sure they work. And uh, he, he said he was very pleased to see that they work so well. Only in Miami. Right. Have a great one. And thank you so much. Maybe he could coach the Cowboys now, huh? They had a tough time last night. Maybe he could be, I mean, the poor, what's his name there? He got caught with a gun in the airport. He's out. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You know, I just wanted to mention there's an article in the Daily Business Review about uh, Hurricane Floyd and the coverage. Yes. So they write that over there that the reporters, the um, meteorologists over there and the reporters have it around the beach, and they said they would put the KGB to shame in their interrogations uh, over there. I agree very much with you that um, they just hog around and they make a big uh, stick about them. Um, yeah, they're not there to do any public service. They're there to be his, as hysterical as they possibly can and to see who can win the most brownie points to get the most viewers. They're there for ratings. Everything they do is for ratings. I mean, they, they so there's a big puddle in the middle of the street. So they, they bring out all the reporters and um, they're watching the Mets game uh, two nights ago and they keep saying, so power outage are 15,000. So who the heck in the world cares how many power outages there are in Dade County? And... Okay, and thank you. Where was he going with that? Did anybody? Uh, no. No. Yeah, we don't care. If your power's out, we don't care because unless you got a battery operator where you're not listening anyway. Well, what does that mean? We don't care. Callous bastard. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560. Yeah, and that's what they all would like to tell you. Oh, we care the most. Working for you. We're, that's Channel 4's deal. Oh, we're working for you. Yeah. We're working to solve your problem. You're not working for anything except to get the ratings in and get the money in, okay? Stop lying to the public. Even a goddamn gullible TV viewing public out there isn't that stupid. Are they? Yes! 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Mm. Feel some good green uh, mucus coming up. Real good one. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. How's it going? Great. Boy, I tell you, last three hurricanes, they were wrong where it was going. Yeah. I mean, how could you have any confidence in them? You can't. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, the one time maybe I needed to put up my shutters, I mean, we didn't have any wind. I live in Pembroke Pines. You know, I come out of the house well, in the morning. Well, 60 mile an hour winds, I would say, I mean, I don't know about by you, but I mean, they're saying to me there were 60 mile an hour winds, and I know a lot of people that did have a lot of wind and a lot of damage, and the rain came in, and they got a mess. No, I didn't have any wind damage. I didn't have any... I live on Ta Taft and Flamingo, so the roads were flooded. Yeah. But I still was able to drive the, that next morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, so how flooded really were they? I mean, see, my car, I had to go slow. I mean, yeah. I couldn't go speeding. It was sunny in the 70 in Toronto on Saturday, by the way. Well, it was sunny here. We just had a lot of water. Oh. But there's no substantial damage. Oh. No substantial damage. I mean, there's no furniture floating around. By you, you're talking about. Yeah, well, I was in Pembroke Pines. I mean, I, the Taft is still flooded. But... But even the houses they showed well, in Sweetwater. It, it, it all depends on where you were. It was very freaky because I know out by me, which are, it's always the worst out there in the acres, yeah. uh, there's very little uh, visible now. And yet, not that far north of Sunrise, the next mile north is Oakland Park. And uh, Oakland Park Boulevard, a lot of it is still, sh at least as of yesterday, was still shut down. Really? Because you, well, you know the thing was, you know, when they showed like North Carolina and, and even New yeah. Jersey, when the, when the rivers flooded and people had four feet, eight feet of water in their house, I mean, that was a flood. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, they're showing houses in Sweetwater that have three inches, and they say, oh, my God, how are these people ever? They don't have insurance. How are they ever going to uh, recoup? How are they going to come back from this? I'm like, well, kind of squeeze the stuff out and get a hair dryer. Yeah, when in doubt, squeeze it out. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so basically what these callers are saying is you people that did have a lot of flooding, a lot of damage, we don't care, okay? We just don't care. Screw you. That's what they're saying. I mean, I can't speak for them. It's America. They want to say their thing, and that's what they want to say to you. Because after all, this is Florida. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. We apologize profusely for the fact that we work for inept management that can't seem to get it straightened out. Whether it was that golf tournament, whether it's the Center One campaign, our promotional department, that TV campaign we ran last year that was so embarrassing with the pasty makeup. Whatever it is that they do, it's always embarrassing. They just can't get it right. One of these days, though, one of these days we'll come in here. Everything in the studio will work. Anybody believe that? No. Uh, come on. 
Here's a lady in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to comment on the storm. Mm-hmm. I I don't think uh, my cable went out, and the only channel I could get in halfway clear was Channel Seven. Oy. Well, you did have problems. Well, you know they didn't cover Broward County. We got an elbow room story that lasted an hour and a half or two. They had a tornado there and some overturned cars. Right. And into their broadcast, I keep running to my backyard, which is a lake, and it's coming up onto my porch, which mm-hmm. is, I don't know, 10, 12 feet. And then a wind would come, and I'm getting waves on my porch. And I run back to the TV set, and they're saying, now we're trying to get you, uh, get the equipment in so we can take pictures of these overturned cars. Right. And what I'm wanting to hear is the storm has left Miami and you have a half an hour that we're on the tail end of it from someone. And I'm wondering, should I turn the electricity off in my house if the water comes in? And I'm looking in the newspaper to see where there's a news station. I can't get anything on the radio about the storm. Right. And I'm, well, you sure wouldn't get it here. That's for damn sure. God, I was home alone in the house and it was... Uh, it, should I go outside and wait in that water to the mm-hmm. uh, my box outside to turn the electric off? And I'm I'm just wanting to know why Broward County wasn't covered better. They were at the beach, and I think that was their one station mm-hmm. until um, later on in the aftermath. I think some people were electrocuted out west. Right. And then they. Then, then all of a sudden they got hysterical and started uh, going out there, right? Well, That's you know, I don't put... live on the beach. I have sympathy for the people that, you know, that got injured yeah. at the elbow room. Well, the, the, I think the bottom line is they did a really embarrassingly bad job, all of them. And I Come disagree with that previous caller. People could not drive down 6th Avenue. Mm-hmm. There was four yellow cabs stuck. And... No, but you've got to understand, a lot of these people, they live in this very little narrow world, and if it didn't affect right where they are, then they don't care. They're oblivious and always much ado about nothing, which no, is a, every, very, every... a very myopic and a very selfish and a very ignorant attitude. And all these horses and cows, right. that they're waste, you know. Uh, well, anyway, okay. I just thought it was poor coffee. Glad you survived. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Five six seven oh five sixty. See, that's the Florida way, though. The other two guys. Yeah, we don't care. That it was not no big deal by us. But to everybody else. Nice. That would be like after Hurricane Andrew saying, "Well, you know, that was only down there, way down there in South Bay, and all those uh, grape pickers and all. You know, we, we don't care about those people." Nice, very nice. As Sally Fitz said. Eleven twenty seven at five sixty WQM. I know that the Lord even loves Neil Rogers. Hi, I'm Ed Buford of Buford Liquor and Guns. We have the largest selection of booze and firearms in the state and will personally assist you in choosing the correct alcoholic beverage and weapon for your next outing. Going squirrel hunting? Then you'll love our low prices on schnapps and hand grenades. Living in the city? Check out our deal on handguns and California wines. Maybe you aren't interested in hunting or self-defense. Maybe you just like to get drunk and shoot at mailboxes. Well, we've got gallon jugs of wild turkey and 44 magnum shells on sale this week only. We're open 24 hours, we've never checked IDs, and we're NRA approved. So come on down to Buford and Liquor and Guns, where everything leaves loaded. It's 1132 at 560 WQAM. Oh, Josie Lambie has a scathing attack here. Nice going there, Josie. Oh! I'm Bette Midler. Who I, I guess she thinks that her <laughs> stuff don't stink is what it is. It's not even a real storm, she was overheard saying. I'm here. I'm ready to go. That was Friday night. When it became clear to her that the show would be postponed, the diva tried to have Saturday's Panthers game rescheduled for Sunday so her highness could perform on Saturday. An arena official said, No. No. We don't change hockey games or sporting events so a fat bitch like you can go on and uh, make a lot of noise. When arena officials held fast, she agreed to Sunday's gig. At the end, saner heads prevailed, thank God, said Nat Center boss Bob Dewey. Midler, who stayed at the Grand Bay Hotel in the Grove, got to the arena shortly after 3 p.m. Friday after a nearly two-hour ride through horrendous weather. For her safety, she rode in a Suburban instead of a limo. After her arrival, the weather worsened, but Midler declared she wanted Governor Jeb Bush to declare an emergency before canceling. She wanted the, go- she wanted the governor to declare an emergency. The best arena officials could do was an emergency declaration from the county manager. She finally gave in. She caved in. That big fat bitch. By then, close to a thousand people, some of whom had paid $150 for a ticket, were in the arena, including Rimmer and his wife. Can you believe that were 998 other people so idiotic, so ridiculous, so embarrassing, 
as to show up there through a hurricane. Through 60, 65 mile an hour winds and feet of rain in flooded parking lots. Friday, I was all set to go on, but they handed me a piece of paper that said I couldn't middle set from the stage to the 14,000 fans at her Sunday show. Neither rain nor sleet nor a blowhard like Irene can keep my fans away, she said. Blow this, bitch. There you go, Bette Midler. Bigger than the rest of the world. Don't you understand? Neither rain nor sleet, natural disasters, are going to impede her uh, thing. She's too important. Here's Coral Springs. Hello. Uh, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. Well, at least we showed it showed how vulnerable we are. Can you imagine if uh, Irene had been a Category 3 hurricane? Yeah. I mean, Broward would have been just a complete disaster. Uh-huh. And as far as the four-letter words go, I don't know if anybody told you about the uh, series Chicago Hope on uh, TV a Thursday night. Oh, yeah, you know something that's uh, very sad, very, very Mark sad. That this is... country is so immature that they had to make a big story out of the fact they said SH on Chicago Hope the other night. Like, wow, are we making some progress, huh? Exactly, but the FCC isn't going to fine NBC. They're not going to be fining Chicago Hope. So I'm wondering, how come the FCC decides you can use a four-letter word in one situation, but you can't use it in another? Oh, because it was very important for them to put the word shit in there because it had to do with the literary value of the program. So now the FCC is going to make themselves literary critics? That's correct. Well, that's absolutely absurd. There you go. How can they decide what's in good taste? See, and what's see, we can bad say taste? any of the words, just just like I said it there. We can say any of the words. I mean, we usually don't because we don't want to press our luck. But you can say any of the words, but it all has to do on the intent. And of course, being mind readers up there at the FCC, they read your mind. Well, I understand. You had a couple of bits that you played. I so, think in other words, got... if I were going to say they're full of and use the same word that I used a moment ago, then they'd get upset about that. So I'll say they're full of crap. Well, you you had a few um, uh, bits that you got in trouble with. I think the none right. was one. Right. Yeah, and I don't understand how you can they can proceed with prosecuting you 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 and letting uh, this stuff go on NBC. It's just uh, absurd. Well, it's the American F and Way, man. Well, uh, it should be a good defense for you, Neil. Okay, have a great day. Well, they're not prosecuting me. They don't prosecute anybody. They find the station. And, of course, Tom Zicka still hasn't discovered that story, has he? No. Because Tom Zicka, being a great journalist, uh, cover uh, whatever he, reporter that he is, he doesn't care about freedom of speech, things like that. Major, major story. And this guy raises a very good point that if Tom Zicka had a brain, which he doesn't, but if he did, he'd be writing about that. That uh, evidently, according to the literary value of the show, they, they felt it would take something out if they took, uh, you know, S.H. It wasn't the line, uh, uh, crap happens. Wasn't that it? I think that's what I, I don't watch that show. I don't know. But in that case, it's okay. But if, they, if it has something to do with the artistic or literary or comedic value of this radio show or any other radio show, then right away we're going to fine you. Five six seven oh five. See, if, if this place ought to be fined, it shouldn't be for words on the air. It should be for incompetence. It should be for what they're doing to people. It should be for what they did at that golf tournament for the unconscionable way that this operation is run. See, this is good now because now it's like they're naked. The emperor has no clothes at all. He's just standing there naked as a jaybird. And everybody's kind of looking at this whole operation over there and going, wow, maybe yeah. Neil's got a point, you know. Five six seven oh five sixty pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing today? Great. Yeah, you know, the only thing that really irritates me about the local stations is that the is the arrogance they display. On Friday, when you were leaving town, they have the wind is blowing and everything's going crazy. And Jackie Nesprall, that airheaded twist. Oh, she's a real bitch. As soon as they take a teleprompter away from these people, they have you can tell they have no brain inside their skull whatsoever. Right. Mm-hmm. She's sitting on the air. It's 4:30 in the afternoon. I'm watching this thing. There's nothing else on. My dishes are out. And she says, oh, uh, we just called, uh, put in a call to County Line Lexus to find out if people should be driving around with their hazard lights on. Now, did it ever occur to them to maybe call a, a, a highway patrol, a police department, something like that? Of course not. And then Does, doesn't Monday, she, is this bitch so stupid she doesn't understand that it's illegal to drive with your but, hazard but lights can you on? Believe, and then five seconds later she goes, oh, and we just got a call from the Florida Highway Patrol saying that people shouldn't drive with their hazard lights on. And it, it, I just want to sit there and throw bricks at the yeah. screen. Not, not that like, Monday, nothing like having a bimbo on when uh, there's okay. an you know, emergency. Monday, event. yesterday morning, putting on the news, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. There's the local, there's that Alicia Ortega, another dumb twit. Yeah. She's on TV and she goes, twit? and here, and I thought to myself, here it comes. She says, we're going to preempt the Today Show, and here was the, her exact words, because we feel we need to guide you some more. 
they need to guide us for another hour on a Monday mm-hmm. to show us people who are still ringing out pots and pans, whatever. I mean, they're going to, they guide, feel guide they need see, to guide us. See, that's the, the height of arrogance for what? I hate to what? break the news to them, but the, now the cow is out of the barn already. Yeah. It was 50 miles down the road. Well, Nobody the bladder exploded. Nobody guidance yesterday. They needed it on Friday and Thursday and Saturday and over the weekend. Well, they were telling us that the cows, the bladders were going to explode if they didn't get milked on time. Yeah. And I thought, hey, that, you know, fine, leave the picture, leave the leave the helicopter over the cows, you mm-hmm. know. Some exploding cows might not be so bad. 30 share, I say. At least. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for the good news. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Take a deep breath. No, no, this is unacceptable. See, I mean, Adam Silverstein turns out to be another one of these guys down there in the sales department who just doesn't get it. He doesn't want to get it. See, if they understood the formatics of this radio station, the problems that we have in keeping the people on hold as it is with these uh, four uh, news newscasts that we do every hour. If I actually did the stuff that they gave to me here, um, we, we wouldn't have any show. All spots, all day. All spots radio. Just take the R out. All spots radio. Hey, speaking of spots. The sports leader. Sports radio 560. Q-A-M. I just wasn't conscious. There's something wrong with our TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our Definitely got that schedule straightened out. I asked him what was so upsetting, but he ran out of the studio instead. And then he Say pussy, I'm sorry. 14 till noon at 560 WQAM. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. See, I love when he comes in and he starts telling me about, you know, like the emergency we had here on Friday and the station kept going off the air. And he was here till 7 or 8 o'clock. And, of course, I'm wondering, yeah, but what was he doing? Was he getting any of these things taken care of? No. No. What was he doing? Standing around and being a presence, I guess. Well, that's important, you know. Like when the people were making all the noise in the halls when you were trying to do the show on Friday? Standing around and being a presence, just being seen. Here's uh, Kendall. Hello. Kendall. Long gone. Okay, let's try uh, Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I was wondering if you saw the uh, television section of the Herald today. About... About our uh, dictator uh, mayor Raúl Martínez, Hialeah. Yes, I did see that. Oh. Uh, and you know something? I don't care if the kid weighed 150 pounds. What was that punk doing out there disrupting traffic anyway? He was just looking to be a part of this group of rowdy people in the street. And I say, hats off to Raúl Martínez. Beat him up again is what I say. Yeah, but why can't they come around, uh, turn around and sue uh, Raúl? They are. He are started they? it. Are they? 
Isn't that what it said? That, that's no, what no. They, said. Uh, well, they were going to throw this kid in jail. Yeah. And now it uh, turns around, they're dropping all charges. And uh, doesn't say anything about the kid turning around and suing uh, the mayor. Why can't they charge the mayor if the, if the photo shows him hitting the Maybe kid? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Let me let me find the story, okay? It's in the Herald. Uh, what page? On uh, page? 6E. 6E. Now, that's that's in the uh, Dade section. Right. I'll find it. I'll get to it. That, that's not what I thought. I thought that the kid was suing the mayor. Isn't that what the story was? Huh? Where the hell is my story? See, this is the problem when you got a goddamn newspaper that puts out two different sections. Oh, here it is. Yeah, he's right. It is 60. It says, um... The state attorney's office dropped all charges against Mirabelle. And uh, not, maybe it doesn't say he's suing anybody. Why, why the hell doesn't he sue him? In addition to which, what was he doing out there in the first place, like I said before, besides being a punk and disrupting traffic and, uh, you know, grabbing on? I, I have no respect for people that do that. Nice going, Mayor. Pick on the small guys. That's always the way to do it. He's not going to pick on some 250-pound guy that's going to beat the crap out of him. He picks on a little guy, beats the crap out of him, and uses him as, as an example. That should be a message to all you kids out there. If you're going to beat somebody up in school, don't pick on somebody that's twice your size. Pick up on some little wimpy kid and beat the crap out of him. And then they will fear you. At least all little wimpy kids will fear you. The big ones, they'll kick the snot out of your ass. 567 oh, 0560, five, pound 560 on the 8. They're just obsessed with that thing, with that Channel 7. And again, Channel 7 exploiting a situation again, over and over again, for fun and profit, because they found it on the tape. Here's a mobile in Palmetto Park. Hello. Neil, God. Yes, sir. What's going on, Neil? Neil, after watching all these local <laughs> yokels on the news squatting over their maps and looking at the radars and all this other crap, the best way to find out what the weather's going to be is look out your window. Yeah. And I want to say to all the douchebags in Indian Trail who never let our canal water down, you are a bunch of scumbags. Thank you. Okay, good luck, sir. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Did we have one person call this show yet? Who was at the Bette Midler concert Sunday night? No. Who actually showed up there on Friday? No. No. I wouldn't admit it either. I'd be embarrassed. See, remember he he admits it because we already know he's that cheap that he wouldn't give up his hundred and fifty dollar piece tickets. That I believe he actually paid for them, which is definitely he ain't going to give those up. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a lady uh, mobile in somewhere. I can't, I couldn't read this thing if you paid me. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. I heard you earlier talking about the Atkins diet. Yes, ma'am. Just want to tell you it works and it's safe. Well, are you telling me something I don't know? I've been the uh, I've been the main tower of the Atkins for five years down here. You have. Yes, ma'am. Didn't know that. Well, there you go. Huh. Well, I think uh, I think people if people would read about it. At least read the books. Well, they must be reading the book because it's still number two on the uh, paperback bestseller and it's been out for uh, five or six years now. Wow. But the problem is a lot of people are lazy, so they'll call up and say, oh, I hear about the Atkins, uh, how do I do it? And I always say, well, why not start by reading the book would be good. <laughs> right? Yep, just this need is... to get educated about right. it. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. Yeah, this American Dietetic Association, let me say it again, you people ought to hang your heads in shame along with most of the physicians in this country. We have an epidemic of fat. More people dying from fat by far than dying from cigarettes. And yet the government is so righteous about the cigarettes, the tobacco companies, and they're lying. Well, how about the food companies? Aren't they lying too? Wonder Bread makes strong bodies seven ways. Wonder Bread kills people, okay? It's, it's goddamn uh, crap is what it is. All that stuff, refined carbohydrates, kill. And especially if you have diabetes. Now, don't tell that to the American Diabetes Association that is still doing their, their uh, whatever the hell they call that thing, the balanced uh, from the food groups, all that bull crap. That's bull crap. The pyramid scheme. Yeah, the pyramid. It's a pyramid scam, right. You're a bunch of idiots. You just try doing that American Diabetes Association diet and then start taking your blood sugar every few hours and watch it skyrocket to the goddamn moon. Jackie Gleason would be proud. Even Alice never went to the moon that fast. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a call from Naples. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes, sir. Well, there goes the Wonder Bread account. 
We don't right? have any Wonder Bread accounts, sir. <laughs> I can tell why. Hey, I found it curious when this storm came through that once it reached 75 miles an hour and they declared it a hurricane, that for the next 18 or 20 hours, the speed never changed. It didn't go to 74 miles an hour. It yeah. didn't go to 76. It was always right on 75. Yeah. And as it approached Naples, because they were saying we might get it first, mm -hmm. they were preparing us for 40 knot gusts. I said to my wife, where's the 75 mile an hour winds? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, that thing was going to stay at 75 miles an hour come hell or high water until everybody milked it come for everything it was worth. Well, well, what does that mean? Well, I, I don't think they'd tell us if it had dropped back to tropical storm strength. Well, let me ask you, did you have any damage over there? No, we uh, missed it. It went over to toward you guys. And, yeah, so what are you bellyaching about? Well, I'm not, except that uh, they kept saying, this hurricane, this hurricane, this hurricane. For all we knew, it was less than that, but nobody was about to admit that and blow their... Uh, so, so in other words, you're telling us now that they lie about the wind strength, too? Yeah, not I wouldn't only they blow it or was going, but they lie about it? I wouldn't be surprised. Like some kind of a communist conspiracy? Well, how do you Maybe explain... the Beasley's had something to do with it. <laughs> how do you explain for 18 hours it was exactly 75 miles an hour? I don't know. Not 70 I'm not a meteorologist. I have no idea. Once it cut out in the Atlantic, then they said, oh, it's 80 miles an hour. All I know is that Floyd, that we were tracking for days and days, that we had much greater warning on, that that reached a certain, uh, whatever the hell it was, intensity, and it stayed the same for a very long time, also yeah. for many, many hours. Exactly. So what's the problem with that? Well, I Maybe don't Maybe that's the way hurricanes work, sir. Are you a meteorologist? You... <laughs> oh, no. Okay, right. thank you. Sounds like a commie plot to me. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I guarantee you by two o'clock, not one person will call the show who was it who went to the. There were a thousand people went to Bed Midler Friday night at the Macarena. Oh, and then by the way, there were some people wondering, gee, how come we had such crappy attendance at the Panther game Saturday? Fourteen thousand some odd tickets sold, and I don't know how many showed up. Maybe we'll get a spy report on that. How many actually were in there? I hate to break the news to you, but after they had the one debacle there the night before, after the parking lot is flooded, and after a lot of people also are flooded in, uh, maybe a lot of people were going to take their lives in their hands again. You think that might have had a little bit of something to do with it? Uh huh. Could be. Here's a mobile in Coconut Creek. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes. How you doing? Okay. Good. Neil, I was calling just to say that, first of all, everybody that's bragging about the so-called Hurricane Center... This this guy that they all think is the other god besides you, Jerry Gerald. Yeah. He predicted that this thing was not coming our way. Right. He said it right on television. Did he really? So, yes, he did. So he blew so it. He, so he's one of the morons down there in the Hurricane Center that screwed up. He and actually, then the, he the, actually the, the said media that. media listen, and listen to him. He actually said that it was not coming here? He Well, he said that it was not coming to us. It was going to Naples, and we were only going to get the outskirts of that storm. Right. So... I mean, everybody that's saying that the National Hurricane Center did nothing wrong, right there they did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't, you can't say it's not coming this way. Say that it may not come this way or whatever. In addition to which, if they would have been doing their job right, there's no reason in the world why any of the other people, Don No, Norcross, or any of the other ones, why they would have contradicted them. They, they don't do that. Right. They, they, they might embellish it a little bit if they want, you know, for effect like Brian hyperventilates, but they certainly wouldn't have contradicted the forecast. Exactly. Uh, the other thing was, for that uh, so-called, what I call a moron that called you a little while ago and said how we don't have it that bad, these people with only four inches of water in their yeah. living room and mm -hmm. all that about, and all the people in North Carolina. And to ask him, well, what about the lives we lost when that, in that four inches of water? Mm -hmm. Ask he, him how you, he, you if he'd like it if he lost his whole family. You don't understand. He doesn't care. He's another one of these assholes who only cares about what it's likely to know about a three-block radius of where he is, and other than that, he doesn't care. That's the Florida way, man. Right. Well, Neil, you're still God, and we'll okay. talk to you later. Hang in there. Bye. Five six seven oh five sixty. So, Jerry, Gerald, you screwed up, you old fart. The National Hurricane said because when I left here on Thursday, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to miss some nasty rains over the weekend, but didn't think I was going to miss the end of the world, or that there would be fifteen and twenty inches of rain here and all this flooding and people having a nervous breakdown and power out for outages for over a million people. What did I say? Power out for outages? Whatever the hell I said. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? No. Too bad. Get with it. In fact, uh, I get up Saturday morning, I turn on the TV. They had, oh, and by the way, remember the guy that called us last Thursday and was asking me, do I believe in the yin and the yang and the balance? And said we were going to have, because they had the hurricane and Tur the earthquake in Turkey, there was going to be a massive earthquake in California on December 22nd. He called while you were gone, too. I bet he did. Well, guess oh, what, Cal? You're over two months off, asshole. We can't use forecasting like that. 11.57 at QAM. <laughs>
From the creators of the fabulous show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's Who Wants to Live in a Trailer Park? Okay, for 35 food stamps, a child will have an IQ of 4 if your sister has sex with A, her brother. That's me. B, her cousin. Oh, that's Jethro. C, the town idiot. Hey, that's me too. Or D, the family dog. Scruffy? I done that. I didn't get no babies from it. So I'm gonna have to go with A, her brother. Me. Final answer? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Either A or C, because you are her brother and the town idiot. And you do, in fact, have a son with an IQ of four, don't you? Yeah. Hey, stop trying to sniff your bum crack, Billy Joe Bob. And, and smile for the cameras. Tune in next time as we try and turn those 35 food stamps into a double-barrel shotgun with no safety on... Who wants to live in a trailer park on ABC? Come on, it, five, six, six, shut up, WQM. So anyway, I must confess that when I see all these people in the flooded-out trailer parks... Now, I, I, you know, probably shouldn't say this, but, I, you know, honesty is the best policy. Uh, see these poor bastards flooded out in their trailer parks, like the people in Opelaka. They had them on TV last night. Bop, 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 bop. They were really pissed off. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I mean, uh, they're trailer trash. Let them lose their souls, you know. Well, that's what I think. I mean, the kind of people who live in trailer parks, you can't feel too sorry for them, can you? I mean, if somebody died or something really terrible, you have to be a little bit sympathetic. But uh, when people are living in trailers, they had one woman on there. I mean, the whole thing was trashed. She spent $1,000 to buy this trailer, and she thought her life was, like, all set. Everything was uh, you know, great. And the thing is just trashed. What? Good timing. Tommy wants to show you a picture of his house. This is a picture of my trailer. Oh, Tommy, by the way, lives in a trailer. Should have known that anybody who walks around with hair like that lives in a trailer park. Lovely. Look at that. These look like pictures from Canandaigua Lake. Not along the lake, but inside the lake. So as you were driving by, you didn't know, but you were laughing at him. That's beautiful. That's great. Ah, oh, yeah, but there it is. is that yours? No, that's my cousin's truck. Oh, somebody's got a nice uh, pickup truck there, which you got to have when you live in a trailer park. you got, like, a little car in a trailer park. <laughs> You're screwed. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Water almost up to the frickin' window. What? What is that? I don't know. I see a roach on the ground by the <laughs> trash can. Yeah, so two roaches on the ground. Where's this trailer park? What's the name of it? Look at the Jesus. Did you see that? That's my street. There are lakes smaller than that. Well, nice going, Tommy. Yeah. Like I said, uh, trailer trash. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty. <laughs> oh man, those pictures are staggering. Should have seen those roaches on the ground. They weren't moving either. And pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a fact that says so many people were caught going home on Friday. We had nearly eight. See, the people that didn't get the brunt of it, they're like, well, you know, too bad. Snobs. What's the big deal? And the people that really got belted by this thing, they're like, what the hell is wrong with you, insensitive bastards? Don't you give a crap? And, of course, the answer is no. No, they don't. It says it's a miracle we didn't have more accidents on the road. And, of course, when you see the way they drive on dry pavement on, like, an ordinary day, bad enough. So I think I made the right choice getting out of here Thursday, Friday, over the weekend, coming back last uh, Sunday night. Good choice, Neil. Uh-huh. I must, I must be a psychic. I must have a premonition. Now, if I was psychic enough, I would have had a premonition today coming in here. The studio was still all screwed up again. It wouldn't it would have stayed home, but I'm not quite that psychic yet. Here's a call from Jupiter. Hello. Jupiter. Yes. Uh, did you hear about that Tupac thing that he found Tupac in Mexico? 5670560. Oh, yeah, they got two pucks in the net, okay? Pavel Burry stuck them there. And pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Guy doing real bad, bad jokes. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, one thing about this hurricane. Yes. I heard the guy from the flood control district down here in, in Dade County. Uh huh. He said that he was only notified Wednesday that the hurricane was coming this way, and he opened the floodgates. But he sh they should have had him open before that. I mean, I've never seen Tamiami Canal overflow its banks. Mm -hmm. Never seen it before. I've been living here since 69. Yeah. I think part of the blame has to do with the flood control district. They didn't open up the, the gate soon enough. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you, sir. So, in other words, if we got something that's a last-minute emergency situation, it's obvious here that it's sheer panic. The powers that be here can't get the job done when we have very little warning. They got enough hard enough time when we got day's warning, like with Floyd, when they couldn't get it right. And they're evacuating thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, even after we knew that the uh, eye of the storm was already well north of uh, Dayton Broward. And the mirror's on there going, bop, 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 bop. 
Did you see him on the again yesterday? One minute he had, had to introduce him. Hey, I'm, oh, I'm so disappointed in him. Our old former friend, Juan Medieta. News guy, very short time, Channel 7 news guy for about five minutes. Of course, he couldn't hang out there too long because some of the news people kept chasing him up and down the hall. It was what I understand. So now he's one of the parrots on the mayor's shoulders there in Dade County. And by the way, I notice more and more people are calling it Miami-Dade County. Stop doing that, okay? Stop it. Where do you live? Oh, I live in Miami-Dade County. No, nobody with a brain calls it that. Okay. The fact that the politicians were stupid enough to do that and spend all the money for new letterhead and everything else, that's their problem. Only stupid people say Miami-Dade County, which is why you read that in the Herald a lot. Here's a mobile in uh, Miami. Hello. Hello. In Miami-Dade. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Uh, I just want to talk about the uh, hurricane and the way the uh, news covered it. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know, like at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you know, when the winds were coming in, I turned on Channel 6 to see what was going on. Yeah. And uh, I wonder why it said, you know, a little small thing on the screen there says, Tropical Storm Watch. I mean, this was at 8 hurricane... o'clock when, Friday? Yeah, that's uh, on Friday. Well, when the hurricane was uh, coming over, yeah, Friday. Friday well, night. Tropical Storm Watch was the day before, but I mean, by that time, the hurricane was already here on Friday. No, the... The hurricane was on, you know. I remember it was uh, when the hurricane was coming through. It said tropical storm watch. Nice. But yet they're saying the hurricane came through here, you know, hurricane force winds, you know, and I don't know where the hurricane warning was. They're probably out looking for it right now. Not only that, they but... They screwed we, up, man. Like I said, they all blew it. They all blew it, exactly. And we had tickets for the show Ragtime, the musical, yeah. in the Broward Center for Performing Arts. Right. And they didn't want to cancel it. Because they would have had to give you your money back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, isn't it a little dangerous, you know, to have you your... Uh, that was Friday night? That was Friday night. And they expected people to come in the middle of that rainstorm, but people to be crazy and risk their lives? Yeah. I and mean, so what, the what did they o- do? The only option they had open was either, uh, you know, replace your tickets for another night, but then we bought good seats, you know? Yeah. Pay good money for those seats. And we didn't want to get stuck all the way in the back, you know, in the in the, in the mezzanine, you so know. So what did the, you do? Well, we, we showed up, man. Oh. You know, because it said Tropical Storm Watch on the screen. Oh, I see. Yeah, and we hit the road, and, you know, cables were falling, and trees were dodging. And you got the blow, trees. yeah. Yeah, we were dodging trees up, right? Well, I'm glad Incredible. you survived it, pal. Thank you, Neil. And have a great day. He survived, in spite of you people in the media. You blew it. You sucked. You stunk the joint out. They're always quick to say, oh, what a great job they did. They really gave us a lot of warning, and they had everybody prepared. Well, when they do a good job, you say they did a good job, and sometimes they do. But this time, they stunk. Even some of the dumbest people in this town, even people who are so cheap they went Friday night to the Bette Midler concert that got postponed until Sunday, even some of those people said, They stunk. That's right. That's what I hear. Nine minutes past noon at 560 WQAM. My wiener doesn't whistle. In my face, would you stand up and walk out on me? Yes. It hurts my rear if I hold it too long. There's no stopping my dingleberry.
got real bad gas. We did it to get you started. Oh, I've got something. Well, 15 at 560 WQAM. So Lisa's got uh, some diet show she's doing now. And she's got somebody lost 80 pounds on the Atkins. There are th- thousands, hundreds, maybe millions of people now who've lost weight on the Atkins. And yes, if you go off the Atkins, you'll gain the weight back. Fast. Fast. And it doesn't work for everybody. But it works for a lot of people, and it brings your blood sugar way down. And for many, many people, most, I think, it brings your cholesterol and triglycerides, your uh, blood lipids way down. But, of course, it, uh, you know, it defies traditional uh, medicine and traditional, all this other bullcrap, traditional propaganda. And I'll say it again. If you listen to the American Dietetic Association, you'll be listening to the same assholes that gave you the low-fat thing that made so many more people fat than ever before. The people that were shoveling down the snack wells and the Intamin's donuts uh, dozens at a time. And speaking of shoveling down stuff that uh, is low-carb, come back after um, a long, bizarre weekend. And expecting fully to see cartons and cartons full of these great meringues. I thought I'd come in here and there'd be at least a few dozen of these in here. Are there any here? No. No. I mean, I went on, didn't I give him like about a 40-minute commercial on these things on Thursday? And I wasn't exaggerating. This is the best damn thing for the Atkins. It has no calories, no sugar, no uh, artificial sweeteners, no carbs, no nothing. And it's delicious with taste. Little meringue uh, balls. It's been a long time since I've had balls in my mouth like that. I would say at least since the last trip to Amsterdam. God, they were good. Did we get any more? No. No. Thanks a lot, Peter Leonard. Okay, I know we had a storm. We had a lot of rain. You're under a lot of pressure. Ba 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 ba. You know, we know what it's all about. Crazy person. Here's a Doral. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I'm in Deerfield. Here's Deerfield, like I said. I'm on the wrong. Well, that's confusing. Go ahead. There you go. I was listening maybe, to Sam- Maybe you're really in the Durell and you don't know it. Maybe I'm on the right line and you're I'm in it. Miami Dade. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no. so sorry. You have no idea. I know. I was listening to Channel 6 on Friday night during the hurricane. And yes, they sir? said something very interesting. They said, if your power goes out, yeah. for those of you your power goes out, you can turn on the radio on 877. I'm thinking, if your power went out, how would you know that? The TV's off. So, like an hour later, my power went out. I'm actually. Remember, it was 87 7. I turned on that freaking Mets game on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in there go, well, I don't know if the wind's going to hit me or the rain's going to hit me, but I know the score is a Mets game. I mean, now wait a minute. That was the game that rained all the way through the game. Was that the one? Yep, yeah, on Friday. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, I knew it was raining up there. It must have been a big storm. Have a great day. Okay, thanks. Okay. Do we know what he said? No. It was pretty interesting, but I, I wasn't following it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Before we leave today at two o'clock, I want one person to call. Not Rimmer. I want one other person to call who actually showed up Friday night at the Macarena for the Bed Midler concert. They won't do it, will they? No, because they're too embarrassed. They're too embarrassed, and they know I'm going to ream them a major, major bloody ass. And deservedly so. What kind of a lunatic do you have to be? I mean, the rain is coming. It's like the end of the world. And you're going to go see that fat bitch Bed Midler? I wouldn't walk from here across the hall there into the nephew's office. I wouldn't walk that far. To go see Bette Midler. And they're going to go to the goddamn Macarena in a driving uh, hurricane with water up to their armpits. Crazy people. No wonder they wouldn't call. I wouldn't either. I'd be way, I'd be mortified. I'd be in hiding. Here's uh, Doral. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. A um, couple of things. Sorry uh, about that. Line. I put my finger in the wrong place. Uh, you, were, you were saying Doral. I was going... Uh, hello? Hello? <laughs> no, I just want to keep you on your toes. Yeah. Okay, um, I was checking out all the stations on Friday and on Thursday. The best, the best has to be Don. Oh, Don. No, yeah. no, he's the best. Did he do a good job? Yeah, he's the best. He's He usually does, but I have a, I mean, did he really tell us that uh, the world was coming to an end? No, but see, that's the nice thing about him. He is so calm and so cool when he talks. Yeah. You know, it's like you can you can calm down because uh, you know it's just a lot of rain. 
Um, another thing that I noticed on, on other stations, I don't know if you've ever seen when they show satellite pictures, they have like three or four different mm-hmm. shots of everything. You know, they have one that shows the hurricane in white, and then they got another one that actually shows the rain in red. Right. And then they got this other one that's a black screen, and it shows, you know, the whole United States uh, outlined in white, and it's almost transparent. Yeah, and I know the one you're talking about. I wanted to uh, give you the real thing here, Neil. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> and it actually, it, it's one that you can actually see the jet stream when it's going right, by, or right. front, and mm-hmm. then you, behind it you can see clear. Correct. Well, when the storm had had left Cuba, and it was going straight up, they kept saying, it's going to go to Tampa, it's going to go to Tampa. I noticed that there was a front over, like, Tennessee and Alabama coming down our way. Now, from, from past, they've all, they've always said fronts push it, you know, to the, to the east or whatever. Not once did they ever mention about that front. And I kept looking at it, and I kept saying, I wonder if that front is going to push it at all. But they kept saying, no, it's going to go north, it's going to go north. They never mm-hmm. talked about it. All of a sudden, it started moving east and right over us. And I just, I just never understood why they didn't mention about that. I mean, anybody that knows their geography realizes that, what is it, about 80, 80 85 miles across from Alligator Rally over to the west coast? Right. Not, the state of Florida is a narrow thing. It's a narrow peninsula, you know. Right. How far off do they have to be in their forecast for the thing to come over here to us? I just don't understand why they were so casual about this. Right, right. Now, one last thing, Neil, just to take it completely out of what we're talking about. Please. Did, <laughs> did you, um, this was uh, uh, about Thursday's program. Did you receive my fax this morning about that I'm, um, I've been living in close to Liberty City? Oh yeah, I've, I've got it uh, standing by here. I got it. Okay, hey, that's a that's a you know very you know thing that well, happened. You're, you're learning your lesson. Uh, Mom's the word man. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Have okay. a nice day. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah, you uh, sent me a fax about an experience you had, which I have time. Maybe I'll read it. Maybe not. Maybe tomorrow, or maybe not. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. That's right. If uh, OJ would have been what, I wouldn't have talked about him. I, that, that's the call he was referring to. Since I'm such a professional racist. And let me say it again. You know, every time I go up there to Ontario, it's always amazing to me that the black people there speak English, just as I am speaking it right now, perfectly. I'd be speaking it right now. Be perfect. It's a fraud. It's another part of racist America, baby. Keep black people illiterate. Keep poor people illiterate. And don't think it happens by accident. Don't think that the education system is a piece of crap, especially in poverty-stricken neighborhoods, because, uh, well, just the uh, crap happens, you know? That's the way they want it. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I disagree with the last caller. Um, I see why he didn't pick up on why it was going to turn east watching Don Knows, because Don Knows, the only one in town that didn't say it was going to come our way. Um, he did say? You know, he did not say. He kept saying it was going to go to the north. And you had, uh, what's that guy, Bill Kamal and uh, Norcross, right. actually, got it right for a change. The weather furries got it right? Yeah, every time they'd go live with the weather center, they'd say, uh, the hurricane center, I mean, they would say, it looks like it's nudging a little towards the east, and then the hurricane center would try to rebut it. Oh, no, no, but it's still going to go to the north. Don No kept saying. So, in other words, so the guy that said, we had a couple of calls saying Jerry Gerald at the hurricane center really blew it. Yeah, him and Max Merrifield, or whatever his name is, mm-hmm. the, the both of them, they got it, they totally got it wrong. And uh, Don No. He kept saying, we're just going to get a little wind and a little rain. That's all I kept saying. You know, he's trying to be too calm. You know, he's mm-hmm. that calming voice, like the guy said. Well, he's trying to be yeah. a little too calm. Yeah, coma-inducing. Yeah, exactly. Letting you into a false sense of security. Exactly, exactly. Nice so, going, Don. No. And here all I've been saying, all the raving about him for years now. Uh, in the he, past, he's he, always been, huh? He blew it. I mean, big time oh, blew boy. it. Uh, Norcross, you got to hand it to him this time. I mean, I, I'm not a Norcross fan ever since the Andrew. He's driving me nuts. But he actually got it right, and so did... Uh, but seven. you know what? That's like a boy who cries wolf thing. You know, right. I mean, Norcross is always hyperventilating, and he's got so little credibility with anybody with a brain now that when he starts saying it's coming, and anybody yep. else says no, you wonder, well, maybe there he goes again. Well, know? here, here was my experience on Friday at about three o'clock. I'm on five ninety five and a university, and getting off university, heading north towards plantation. You couldn't. You should, nobody should have been out on the road at that time. Let me tell you, it was like horrendous conditions. And so, um, if they had issued a hurricane warning. At least this way, people would have let their employees go home early. What happened was you had everybody getting off between 3 and 6 p.m. on Friday night in Broward, and they're all driving on the streets, and it was like it was a hurricane out there. It was, we were under tropical storm warning, not watch, as an earlier caller said. Mm-hmm. And what they should have done was upgraded to a hurricane warning, the hurricane center, because the, the center of it passed like six miles west of Cooper City. Jesus So isn't Christ. that close enough to categorize it as a hurricane? Now, we didn't get hurricane winds, 
We didn't have any sustained winds at 75 miles an hour. Yeah. But what the hell? I mean, 58 mile an hour gusts is still like, like I said, they're always telling us some of the, the worst weather and the heaviest rain is always in the northeast right. quadrant of the, I mean, they've brainwashed us with that. That's the one thing we've learned over the years. The yep. northeast quadrant of any hurricane, that's where the heaviest rains and the worst damage usually is. Yeah, when that center came up through, uh, Flamingo, Florida, that's when the weather channel should have, cause it happened like around 10 a.m., I think. That's when the hurricane center should have said, look, hurricane warning, all the, you know, everybody get home and just stay home for the rest of the day. Don't be out driving around because then the news starts saying, "Oh, everybody's out sightseeing in the middle of the storm. They should be out there." They weren't sightseeing. These people had to go to work. Dude, they, if they didn't go to work, they're afraid to lose their jobs or yeah, something. That's, that's right. what happened. So that's what happened. You know, just want to give you my story. Thanks for the bad news. Okay. Thanks. So Don though is uh, he's an, on a uh, crap list now. You just went off the great off the great A list. You slipped down several notches. Okay, Don. No, too bad about that. A good guy. Usually, uh, you know, no, no, no more. No. Five, six, seven. I'll tell you one thing. It was beautiful in Toronto. Don't be rubbing it in now, asshole. Well, it was nice. Sunny and 70 on uh, Saturday. Didn't rain all weekend. Got out of there just when it's starting to get a little bit cooler and uh, cloudy and get gray. The Neil Rogers Show. Sports Radio. 560. Q-A-M. The hurricane's f***ing blow. This is our philosophy. This is our philosophy. And I'm sure... Oh. Oh, excuse me. Well, I'm so fascinated because of the yin and the yang here again. I get a letter from uh, Barbara and Kendall. Thank you, Barbara. Very nice letter. But the only thing she's upset with me about is I keep mentioning you-know-who, O.J., and he loves the publicity, et cetera, and so on. Well, Barbara, amazing as this will sound to you, true story. This came in with all the rest of the mail today, so here's a big package we get, a FedEx package. And you look at the return address, it says Lance Ito in the West Palm or somewhere. And you open up the package, this big bulky thing, and inside is a letter. A two-page letter, obviously, Erzatz, but then the letter, very humorous, amusing. And a huge, not just a knife, what would you call this thing? Not a hatchet. I mean, a knife about like 40 times the size of any uh, knife that I've ever seen. Like a gigantic, like a, a super Puerto Rican switchblade. For a seven-foot-tall Puerto Rican? It's like a folding machete. Yeah. But, well, it's not really a machete, but it's almost with a big, long wooden handle. An open L, Le main couronne, whatever that is, some kind of frog thing. At any rate, it says, I want to forward the item and close to see if you could help me find the possible owner. It seems to be a uh, work fine opening, but only partially closing, et cetera, and so on. Oh, yeah, it is imported from France. It says, I recently attended a golf tournament sponsored by your station. I don't play golf. I was the guy behind the grassy knoll on the 18th hole. I was uh I was there to try to get a sight on. I mean, sighting one of the celebrities that attended, <laughs> and says he picked up this pocket knife uh, dropped by one of the celebrities. Okay, thank you so much, sir. We'll treasure this forever. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but Pick it up well, your ass. yeah, that'll clean out your hemorrhoids. I guarantee you that. You've never seen anything this big. Wow, man, can you imagine that can do uh, the damage that could do? You know what I'm saying? Roy! Five, six, seven, oh, yeah, he always likes to borrow the big one when we have it in here, like that big black uh, penis we had that time. Came rushing in it. Gotta have that. Gotta have that. Can't have this, though. Here's Sonny Isles. Hello. Sonny Isles. Why do I hear that deadly sound? Like you're on sound? Mobile and Coral Springs. I beg your pardon? Say Mobile and Coral Springs. Well, see, that goes back again to this uh, piece of crap. Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Hey, Neil. I yes, went sir. to, uh, how are you doing today? Okay. Good. So I was one of the other people that went to the uh, concert on Friday you night. You went to the concert Friday well, night? Wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. I drove your friend Jeff Rimmer. Well, that I doesn't took... really count that. Well, you know, well, wait. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason we went that, uh, you know, his wife has a major Jones for, for Bet. What, and, is that? Uh, what does that mean? Well, she really, she, she loves Bet Midler. Mm hmm. So we went to the concert. It was fun driving Jeff through all the puddles, though. Yeah. To get there. Yeah. I'm saying there were a lot of other people there. A thousand people. Uh, what was the paper said. Pretty crowd. They were concerned about rioting, which was kind of funny, I thought. 
you know, you got 50 year old people, they don't riot anymore. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought I'd tell you that you could rip me, uh, you know, I was one of the people that was there. Okay. Well, you took Rimmer, that's enough reason. Okay, have a great day. Get out of here. No, I don't want any more Rimmer stories about that. We already know what a bozo he was uh, and is and et cetera going to that thing, but anybody else that went, that's what we want to hear. We won't hear from them. It's a moot point. They won't admit it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a lady in Sunrise. Hello, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I didn't go to uh, Bette Midler. Oh. Okay, but I would like to tell you a funny story. I don't think it's funny. I think it's terrible. Mm-hmm. We had tickets to go see Ragtime at the Theater of Performing Arts Friday night. Uh huh. They're telling you to stay in. All across the television stations, all performances have been canceled, etc. P.S. They went ahead and had the performance. I don't know for who, because all the streets were flooded and closed. They won't uh, have another performance, give you any new tickets. All you can do is go down on any given day, no earlier than 7 p.m., and if they have any tickets, they'll give you uh, uh, whatever seats are available. And we spent over $150 on these tickets. So, in other words, they won't give you a refund? They won't give you anything. Well, what kind of crap even is if that? They get, even if they give you... Uh, seats, you know, in the nosebleed sections, and they're only like, you know, $40, and you spend 150 you lose your money. Nice. So much for county government, huh? There you go. Okay. Don't I just it. thought you'd like that. Don't do it again. I won't. Okay. Bye. How do you like that? What kind of crap is that? Why didn't they cancel, I mean, did it take a rocket scientist to figure out, here, you got a hurricane, not just a tropical storm, you got a freaking hurricane, man. You get on there in the middle of the day and all afternoon, all evening, and you announce all of these things have been canceled. They'll be rescheduled at a later date or whatever, or if you want refunds, whatever. The problem is nobody wants to give anybody their money back. That's the problem. That's why they hemmed and hawed on that Bette Midler crap, and she still wanted to go ahead with it. Of course, she wanted to get paid. Pathetic. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Fort Pierce. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Fort Pierce, Terry. Sounds like you, Terry. Hey, how are you? All right. Yeah, I've got a bunch of demented surfers up here. Uh, I was trying to tell them about you. Uh, we can barely get you. And uh, anyway, I was hoping you might play, if you could, before the end of the show, the Ganja song. Okay. It's a righteous song. Enjoy your show, and you're right about the weatherman. Did you see Dave Barry two weeks ago in his column? He wrote all about the weatherman and how they sit on the same seat for 60 hours, and damn if it didn't happen again. No, my mother, my mother won't let me read Dave Barry. Well, he is per, it's pretty radical. You're yeah, right. That's true. Okay, Have Barry. a good day. Have a great one. Bye. Bye. Okay, they're doing it up there in Fort Pierce. They can barely hear us. How do you like that? Of course, so they can barely hear us down here, too, on this station. we got this great signal. <laughs> like that. Yeah, let me get this thing out. I'm feeling a little bit better, making a little bit of a comeback after that first grotesque half hour this morning. Thank you again. Thank you again, Greg, for being a real major asshole. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that thing. Can you can you actually understand it? Yeah, you sound like Darth Vader. Beautiful thing. I love this. So what's the deal on? Oh, I'm sorry. Getting carried away. I'm getting like a real one. Oh, no, seriously, we're going to do these things. In fact, if we had a real engineer, he would just order it. And Did you talk to Greg while he was in there about getting the real uh, shredder? I'd like to stick his ass in a shredder is what I would like to do. I'd like to put him in a shredder. In fact, his hair already looks like somebody beat me to it. With that faggy Roman haircut. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Oh, Greg, it's a knife. It's a knife. Don't let him see this. Oh, God. Can you imagine the psychosis if he saw that? I think Neil's going to commit suicide on the air. He's got a big knife. Here's a mobile and cut. Uh, see, I'm on the wrong line again. I don't know where the hell I am. I can't read these days. Sunny Isles, hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, today? sir. Hey, let me let me ask you a question. I don't know if I even brought it up yet, but um, during that hurricane at around 345. On Friday? Yeah, they were going to go to an update. They start scrambling. You could tell something was going on. They started scrambling around a little bit. Who was they? They didn't come back for an update. Who's, who's they? It was either channel. It was channel seven. Okay. Okay. They didn't come back for another. They were supposed to come back at four o'clock with an update. They didn't come back till five thirty with the National Weather Center. Nice. And at that point in time, the National Weather Center said they had lost their server on their computers. 
<laughs> Meaning, so for two hours, they had no idea where that hurricane was at. Great, that's beautiful. And at that point in time is when they decided to say that it was only a tropical storm because they did not want to have that egg on their face by saying what it really was, which was a very borderline hurricane. Right. So, I mean, no one's brought that up, but they lost their service for over two hours. They had no idea where that thing was. That's beautiful. And uh, what, well, what, what time did it start really raining hard here? Listen, I was at Sunny Isles, and, it won't, and I, I'm from upstate New York, so it, I've been through blizzards, but I'll tell you what, I, if a Hurricane 5 would hit here, I don't know what would happen. Yeah. I mean, it was scary, but Rick Sanchez did say one of the funniest things ever I've ever heard anybody say. At one point, they showed these people like in Davie or Cooper City, I don't know where they were, pulling sandbags out to their car. It was around like 8, 9 o'clock at night. They had truckloads of uh, sand, and he goes, uh, it's a little late for that. <laughs> as they're overflowing. Yeah, nice going, Rick. Hey, can I, let me ask you one more question. Yes, with sir. the um With the um, Panthers, <clears throat> Did they have an all Russian line I heard they're gonna have last week in a hockey game? All Russians playing at one line. Do you know if that ever happened? Uh yeah, and they brought that kid Nova Seltsev up and he played with um two Russians, right? Well no wait a minute. He he took but he took Burray's place, see, because Burray was out injured. Right, but they're supposed to have an all Russian line and I was wondering if they're allowed to speak Russian when they're out there on No, the no, absolutely not. Engl only in Glaze. Yeah, very good, very good. Unless they know the Russian mafia, then they'll speak whatever they want. Very good. Okay, have a great day, pal. Don't don't buy a house. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Yeah, they had fourteen thousand in some for that uh, exciting three two overtime win against the uh, Ducks on Saturday night. And like I said, they should be kissed around that uh, that many showed up. Uh, however many you actually were in a flood. How was the drainage there, by the way, at the uh, Mac Arena? How's the parking lot up there? We're going to get any spy reports on that. No. For tomorrow night's game against Vancouver, in which Pavel Bury might be back. But you know something? I have a feeling that if he's not going to be back for tomorrow night, we probably won't hear anything about it ahead of time. Because they want us to show up. You know what I'm saying? 20 before uh, 1 at 560 WQM. Ray Whitney has a pair. These days, there's a lot of confusion about banking. More big banks are merging with bigger banks. And they're all making promises about free checking this and customer service that. But when it's all said and done, you want a bank you can trust, one you can turn to, one that gives you what you deserve. We're that bank. Fiduciary Union. At FU, we know you don't like long lines at the bank. So when you come to our bank and see the line, you'll say FU. Want to talk about customer service? After talking to one of our loan officers about a home loan, you'll say FU. So when you're looking for a bank, there's only one thing we can say to you. F you. I do remember it. Oh, I know exactly what bank that is, by the way. 1245 at 560 WQ. I don't want to mention it because uh, then people will start uh, bitching about it. So anyway, the greatest news in history for me, most of you don't give a crap. In fact, I, none of you care. That song, the Bravo All-Stars, Let the Music Heal Your Soul, which I told you about that video that I've only seen about three times in my life, twice in Amsterdam and one on Much Music out of Toronto. And nobody, it's a whole compilation of these different groups. Three or four, uh, there's a Swedish group in there, there's a couple of German groups, and the Backstreet Boys, no less, which of course immediately disqualifies a lot of you, but nevertheless, it's a great video. And Tracy Neely, my new close best personal friend, has found it. I don't have it, I mean, this is the crappy one I recorded off the uh, TV. And I'm going to tell you something, Kid Curry... And the Schmo Griffin and all my friends at Power 96, if you're smart, when I get a hold of that thing, they should play the crap out of that over there because they'd be the only ones in, uh, I won't say North America because much music's playing it, the only ones in the U.S. playing it probably. And that thing is going to be bigger, I guarantee you, bigger than Mary Tyler Moore and the $6 million man. That is such, if I could tell you, finally, taking a crappy day, taking another depressing day at Greg Reed's sandbox and turning, nice going, Tracy, that's for you, sweetheart, even if you didn't get me any uh, tickets for the concert. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever been to Costa Rica? No. Uh, so you, do you know how the weather is down there or anything? Because I'm going down there this summer. How the weather is? Well, some days it rains and some days the sun shines and some days it's cool. Some days it's a little bit warmer. Kind of like that. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five, <laughs> and I hear they got a great McDonald's too. Oh! As a matter of fact, I heard some bad things about Costa Rica. Remember that one time I was going to go to San Salvador, and I did not, and I think it was a very good idea. Is it San Salvador? What do you mean you don't know? I've never been to Costa Rica either. No, but I heard all the great things about Costa Rica from your good friend, the bug man, Phil, who I haven't seen in months, oh, by the way. Oh, I haven't even heard from him. I haven't heard from Phil in months place. and months. I got, I got ants in my house. 
that haven't been invented yet. They haven't discovered these uh, kinds of ants yet. New, new, uh, whatever. But at any rate, so, uh, I heard all kinds of wonderful things and planned a trip there and then changed my mind at the last minute and went someplace else. But nevertheless, I hear it's uh, another one of those banana boat countries. A lot of crime, a lot of violent crime, a lot of, uh, tourists being kidnapped, all kinds of, so I guess the deal is just don't go to Latin America. That's the best deal. Uh huh. Sounds good to me after that trip to Venezuela, Colombia. And then, of course, uh, the only other Venezuelan I ever met was you know who, so that told me everything I needed to know. Won't see him no more. Here's the sunrise. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. You want to talk to anybody who was at the show sun- Sunday? No, yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, you didn't go, did you go Friday? No. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Uh, we, uh, I live in Sunrise. It's like a, normally a 10 minute drive to the arena. Oh, yes. The entire street was a lake. It was ridiculous. Right. But anyway, the show was okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would say they probably had about 85, 90% capacity. But I mean, it was Condo City. You know, as far as uh, lots of senior citizens there, mm-hmm. I recognized about four songs. I went because my wife wanted to go. Oh, right. right. But uh, so, in other words, Rimmer went there with a bunch of old farts. I'm I'm ecstatic to hear this. This is great. That's nice that, going, it, Rimmer. It was like that. Now I'm maybe I'm not he was looking fit. for the early bird. Maybe he thought they had dinner there too. That could be. Well, uh, you know what the prices are there. I don't have to tell you. Yeah. You know, and they were scooping up like $30 t-shirts and $20 programs like they were going out of style. Mm -hmm. The one thing I did want to say, I'm not a big fan of Cher either, but I saw that show at the National Car Rental Center also. Yeah. That was an amazing production. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like a Vegas show, different sets, great lighting, great sound. This was basically like, okay. And I left there and I'm, I'm sitting to myself, I never saw this crowd really get into the show. In other words, what you're saying is you probably should have done a show at like the condo center at Carriage Hill, something like that? That probably would have been pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it I was, it was just an unexciting show as far as I was concerned. Now, how was the parking lot at the Macarena? The parking lot was great. Was it? Well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest out? with you. Whenever I go to the Macarena now, I try to park at the, well, the, the end of the parking lot that's closest to Flamingo Road. Right. You know, and uh, usually I can get out of there in no time. It's a little longer walk to the, the center. But getting back to the car, I'm usually out of there in no time. Yeah. You know, over to Flamingo and then to Oakland, and it's it's fine. So, in other words, if they would have had the concert Friday night, you would have uh, passed. Definitely. Thank it God. was unsafe to go. It was Thank ridiculous. God. Thank God for your sanity, sir. Okay, have a good one. And you too. Bye. There's a sane gentleman, okay, oh, who was hey. honest enough to tell us that just a bunch of old farts and the Rimmers were there on Sunday night to see Bette Midler. All the old Jews from Sunrise were there in their Jew canoes. Well, that's good. You have to have a canoe when it's, the weather's like that. So why not take your Jew canoe? What is that thing with Cadillacs? I've asked that. That's another. I've got all these different questions I've asked so many times over the years I can never get a response. You want to know why? Because they're embarrassed to think about it. Why is it that Jew, old Jews and Schwarzers of all ages have this tremendous desire to drive a Cadillac, even if it's a crappy old Cadillac? Cadillac is like a steamship. It's not like a normal car. It's like a battleship, like a continental. It's intimidating. Is that what it is? People get out of your way. And then the saddest part is that they take up so much space on the road. When you're that old and that bad of a driver, you should be driving like a puddle jumper, not a big battleship. It's safer. It's not safer. It may be safer for you, but not all the other people you're going to scatter all over the road, sweetheart. We don't care about them. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless phone. Glad everybody had a good time with Bette Midler, that bitch, fat bitch, with an obnoxious attitude, imperious, uh, arrogant attitude. And also glad to hear the show was very mediocre. She'd have been much bigger with the uh, Carriage Hills condo, uh, whatever they call that thing, the amusement center. Here's Pompano. Hello. Pompano. Yeah, I was there on Friday night. You were there Friday night? Yes, sir. Oi. I was insane. Drove out there, kept calling up until quarter after seven to see if it was still on. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Get out there. There's four feet of water in the parking lot. Yeah. The rain's pouring, the wind's blowing, tr- trees are falling, yes. and then they notify us it's canceled. So we turn around, took me 30 minutes to get home. Yeah. Then I call Cellar Door Productions. They've rescheduled it for Sunday. Well, mm-hmm. I have tickets for Sarah Brighton on Sunday. For what? For Sarah Brighton. Sarah Brighton? Brightman. Brightman. Excuse oh, Brightman, me. Brightman. Yes. So they said, well, it was rescheduled, and there's no refunds if it's rescheduled. Yeah. And I said, well, that's ridiculous. I said, you, you, you know, we were out there in this storm. 
it should have been canceled. Right. So I finally just let American Express handle it. I called them, told them the situation. They said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of good, it. Good for them. Always trust American Express. They'll stick it to cellar door as well they should. Well, and they should because it was absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. I was also insane for going out there in the first place. Right, exactly. Don't do it again. But I would never see pay to see that bitch again if my life depended on Even it. Even if you had to float over there. Don't do it. No way. Okay, pal. Take care. See ya. Bye. And butch up. Five six seven oh five sixty. There's a guy at least uh, admits that he went and he flew over there to uh, see that bitch on Friday night through all the rain and the wind and the storms. The diva. Oh, do I hate that word? I'm so sick and tired. All this, all the, everything is so trendy. Every now and then come along these ridiculous words, and they just drive them into the ground. This one's a diva, and that one's a diva, and everybody's a diva, diva, diva. I used to like Devo. You picking on Beefo again? Don't forget. He's the dangerous one. I'm telling you right now, don't ever try, don't trust him with this knife. Remember the OJs, if I can use those initials again? Remember what they were singing about? The backstabbers? The OJs. That's Beefo. Beware of Beefo. Paranoid, delusional man. Here's a, a mobile implantation. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. All right. Um, I was just, uh, one of my friends is a delivery person at night once a week at the Sabo's implantation. Right. And you're saying how bad the weather was. He almost got suspended for a week because he didn't want to go in Friday night in the hurricane to deliver pizza. What a bunch of crap. There, I mean, the on there, Friday I mean, night when there was four feet of water on the ground? In the hurricane. And when you said it's not safe conditions, they said, well, we're delivering. If you don't come in, you're going to be suspended for a week. That's nice. And finally, afterwards, they wound up not suspending the person. But who, who's gonna, who's delivering pizza in a hurricane? Who's ordering pizza? What kind of a person in their right mind expects some delivery guy to show up in uh, four feet of water? Yep. And also, we were talking about the Bet Miller and everything. I happened to be getting tickets for a different show the day they went on sale, and I didn't know it was the same day. And you get there, and there's a line of all old people. And it's the funniest thing, because you sit there, every old person knows another old person. So as the old people come, you wind up not moving, because they know everyone, and just keep cutting the line, going in front of everyone. And instead of the line going one way, it starts going uh, the wide way instead of the long way with all the old people. Uh huh. Ridiculous. But I just want to say, you know, that's, that's not right for them to sit there and have people delivering pizza on a Friday night and have the people get in trouble for not wanting to do deliver it again, the Salvos. We'll rip you an ass on the air if you do it again. All right, Neil. Okay, thanks. Expecting people to go out there and risk their lives to deliver a few crappy pizzas. Are you people crazy or what? Uh-huh. Nutcases. Whew. It's uh, 1256 at 560 QAM. Speaking of uh, something good to eat, where are you having lunch today? Well, I should ask that a long time, but we're not having lunch. No, my head is just. I'm. I feel like I've had a concussion. I really have from this. Uh, from this place. <laughs> oh. It's a one to two hour. I sing a low tone. I am a baritone With me some notes cannot be found But somehow I can't believe They want me to do this I know what I can reach And this ain't gonna happen Oh no This sounds too high too high for me, out of my key, it's too high. Someone kick me, like back damn, in my FD. All right. Oh, it's too high. Too high for me. What'd you kick me for? <laughs> Rectum, 101 at 560 WQM. Hank will be a cool city today from 2 to 6. Boog, Shambi, 6 to 737. Uh, 6 to 737. Because at 737, we got the Mets at the break. Couldn't he just write 735 on there? Would have made sense to me, huh? I'm sorry. I'm going to get him uh, choked up again. The Mets at the Braves tonight, okay? And by the way, so what did I do with that fat boy thing that he pointed out to me? You'll, you'll love this. The people that hate all those gam- stupid gambling shows. When Robin Ventura hit the Grand Slam home run to win their game for the Mets the other night, which I did see that, and he didn't uh, wasn't able to uh, round the bases and touch home plate because his teammates mobbed him at second base and the winning run had already scored. 
So it was ruled a single in the final score instead of 7-3. to three, It became 4-3. to three. But Ventura's single cost the Las Vegas sports book and betters thousands of dollars. It may not have mattered in New York or Atlanta, but in Las Vegas, some bettors had wagered thousands of dollars that the number of runs scored would be over or under 7.5. That was the over-under. One sports book said a profit of about $5,000 disappeared because Ventura never rounded the bases. All right. All right. Nice going, Robin. So we'll see if the uh, Braves continue their fold-up back tonight. A couple of amazing faxes. First of all, speaking of concerts, you know who's going to be here tomorrow and uh, the next night, Thursday night, Miami Arena? You don't know? Let me give you a clue. <laughs> That's clue number one. Enrique Iglesias. Well, you got another job lined up? I can't believe you said that. But same um, ethnic background, generally. Uh, Fabrizio, Fabian, uh, Fairban. Uh... No, no, you missed the clue. <laughs> you got to narrow it down more than that. No. Christian. No. Top of the list. There you go. Only well, took about 20 tries. Not bad. So here's a review that somebody faxes me. What the hell was this in? They never tell me this must have been in uh, City Link or New Time. Review in concert by Bill Meredith and Jerry Warm Sucker and Suckin or something like that. Great. Nice going, guys, Bill and Jerry. Get a better name. I won't read the whole thing because it's all caustic and I would love it. But the last part says, Ricky Martin has proved that the visual element is too um, important in music. Without the small screen and the advent of MTV, VH1, other useless avenues for piss and fail Hollywood directors and their surrounding cast, people like him would still be soap opera actors, a loose use of the term actor, or models, dancers, or choreographers. Martin can't write, so he scoops up songwriter, former, uh, for, for, what is it? A for songwriter for a hired uh, child. What is it? Oh, I can't, this is bizarre. It's hard to read. He can't produce, so he brings in Gloria Estefan. What a plan. His music is so produced that you really can't tell if he can sing. But who cares if he's the next Millie Vanilla when there's piles of cash being thrown at him? When you're a musical artist and the only real talent is dancing and looking like a Latin Ken doll, you don't have to have a plan. You have a backup plan. Stop backing up, America. <laughs> nice going, Bill and Jerry. And I hear that Ricky's been backing into a lot of things lately. Yeah, that's what I hear. Here's another fax, which I hope I read better than that. It's hard to read some of those faxes. It's like uh, like reading the numbers on this screen over here. Nice call, by the way, George Corso, you idiot. Dear Neil, unfortunately, I was one of the poor schleps that had to venture toward the Macarena Friday, the Bette Midler concert. Unlike those who went to see her perform, I had to go and work the goddamn thing. I'm one of the jackasses that worked the parking lot there in the arena formerly known as Marshland. While standing in 70-mile-an-hour wind, I had a bunch of old yentas from Cemetery Hill come for, for the concert and complained that their blue hairdos would be ruined by the rain, mind you that there's a hurricane blowing and one might lose their life. After that, the parking was put to usher people to uh, the... What? Again. The parking was put to usher people to their seats, but when the people started to come in, we were told to block them from their seats like we were the offensive line for Jimmy's Johnson. The concert was then canceled, and all the bull dykes, the screaming queens, and even Rimmer were screaming and yelling. They stunk. They were pissed off and fired up. So to make a long story short, the PR people at the Macarena are effing assholes, says a Dominican in Hialeah. He says you can't complain about the drainage in the arena because there is none. Nice call, my Dominican friend. Even Rimmer was carrying on like a child screaming and yelling with the old Yantas. They stunk. Here's uh, Kendall. Hello. Now, see, I'm, I'm a one-off on this every time. Where is this? Mobile in Miami. Mobile in, what is it? Mobile in Miami. You can't read this for a million dollars. Hello? Mobile in Miami. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, I was on the Palmetto. That's Miami, though. <laughs> Here's a mob, mobile in Miami-Dade County. There you go. Yeah. Neil, uh, I'm a first-time caller, and I wanted to talk to you about your black. You have problems with ants in your house? You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Um, they're probably called white-footed black ants. White-footed. White footed. They or is don't that work. light footed? Yeah, maybe light footed. I'm not sure. A couple but of anyway. light footed creatures in my uh, house that both people though. <laughs> they're uh you can't get rid of the little bastards though. They uh I don't know, they they don't take the poison to the nest or something and kill everything, so they take the poison in the basket? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they um but you can't get rid of them. I have them too, and I got a real problem. I have a well, you know what? You know what's really hardest uh, about getting rid of them is when the bug man doesn't show up for like two, three, four months at a time. It's a real bitch getting rid of them. I got my can of hot shot, and I got rid of the ones I saw the other day, but they keep coming back for more. 
Yeah, you can't, yeah, that stuff won't do anything. Um, Joanne from Pescat can get rid of them for a while, but they always come back. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I also want to tell you, I'm uh, Fat Frank from Cooper City's Godfather, and uh, I just want to know if you heard from him lately, or I know he's a, a long timer. Long Fat time Frank from Cooper City. Fat Frank from Cooper City. I, I guess he used to go to hockey games with you down in the arena, or not with you, but he used to sit near you or something. Fat, Fat Frank. Frank. Cooper from City, Cooper yeah. City. Doesn't ring any yeah. bells with me. I remember uh-huh. Fat Andy, but he uh, sleeps with the fishes now. Oh. Anyway, a nice boy. Anyway, I just didn't know if you heard from him. Well, maybe we will now. <laughs> I'll let you know whether it's good or bad. Thanks a lot, pal. All right. See you. Bye. What do you say? 5670560, oh, pound 560. This is kind of like an out-of-body experience for me here today. And what a shame that there aren't a whole bunch of those uh, meringue things, you know? That would have gone over real big. That would have made me feel almost uh, human today in spite of the first half hour when we had another screaming and yelling with Greg Reed standing here uh, like a like a clown going yeah. his head up against the screen. Oh, gee, I can't even read that. You wouldn't know where any of this stuff is in here, okay? You wouldn't know a microphone from your goddamn rectum. rectum. Just get out of here, okay? Go spend some money. Stop talking a good game. Go spend some money and get some real stuff in here that works. And stop talking a good game about what a great company this is. Cheap, 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 cheap. That's what you are, baby. Cheap, cheap, cheap. That's why that construction project is uh, going along so well out there in the hallway. <laughs> the whole goddamn third floor, it's in limbo. It's doing the limbo rock for about the next two years because they're playing, paying piecemeal. Yeah, that's right, piecemeal. little piece here, little piece there, which, of course, is what goes on in this place. A lot. Roy! Eight minutes after one at 560 WQAM. Sports Radio 560 QAM. Please, enough talking. I'm queer, and my admission, I'm a fag who likes chin balls. I'm here to confirm suspicion, it's that, but that's not all. Are you ready to get to that song and it's a lie? It's so proud of you, this is girl, you're a big guy. I got one addition to what I confess. I found a new addiction. I like to wear a dress. I look at your side the best for a drive is mine. I got broke on fire, just I want to tell you more. Like a boy to the fire. All right, 114 at 560. Don't go see Ricky Martin, please, because if you do, we'll tell. So anyway, the uh, Dominic Kuhn in Hialeah has more to write. He finishes, he left this off. He says, the fun, and this is a good point. Funny thing about the whole experience was that for the Backstreet Boys concert, it was as clear as the space between Greg Reed's ears, but they canceled it. Remember that day? There was there was nothing going on that day. It was on a Wednesday, and uh, the storm was long gone. And everything, but they canceled it because they wanted to give everybody uh, plenty of uh, notice, you know, plenty of uh, head time, so to speak. He says, I just wanted to get an aluminum bat and smash your <laughs> He says, this fat bitch, your show must go on. I wanted to get an aluminum bat and smash your head in. Oh! All right, nice going, Dominicoon. Yeah, well, she's a star. Don't you understand? One, two, three, four. See, what I could have done, where's the uh, magic marker? Here you go. That's almost, the show's almost over. One. I can't read them. It's not going to work. I'll no. put little labels on there. Huh? After the show. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, not yet because we might swap that monitor out because, uh, you know. Here's Kendall. Hello. Sometimes I feel like life is passing me by. But when I li- What was that? Hey, Neil. What just happened to you on your phone? Is that your phone? Who? Go ahead. Neil. Yes. Hey, when uh, is Miss McGill coming down, down here to Miami? When is what? 
Luis Miguel. Luis? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any date. You don't, but are you know you know if he's coming back? He's coming, time? yeah. He's coming and you're going, right? Then I'll I'll be there. He's coming and I'll be there. I'll see you then. In the okay. Road, buddy. Bye. Arrivederci. Yeah, Luis Miguel, when's that concert coming? There's a guy who can really sing, unlike this uh, this idiot that's going to be tomorrow and uh, Thursday night. And they'll be jammed with all these silly little people, all these silly little women who think that, oh, Ricky, Ricky, look at me. And he's laughing. Yeah, he says, forget it, bitch. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Must be very frustrating to all these uh, young ladies out there just obsessed with these uh, young superstars knowing in deep recesses of their mind they have less than no chance. Now, how come uh, these all say, now, see, the beep went off there, and now these all say... Uh, because this thing's a piece of crap. Oh, in other words, the phone thing is all screwed because up again? Because it was made by the Gettner people, and if they won't make a software... Oh, the Gettner like... people made it. No wonder the same people that made this phone system that I was promised we were getting rid of and getting a real phone system in here, so we got a, a goddamn uh, program in here for this thing that also doesn't work? Hollywood on 3 is the next one, if you will. Here's Hollywood, like I said. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Neil, I'd like to share my experience on the Bette Midler situation yes, sir. Friday night. I was oh, one of the assholes hey. that attempted to go. Well, I commend you for your honesty anyway. Well, yes. Not yes, your intelligence, yes. just your honesty. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I bought my girlfriend tickets, $150 a piece, to see oh, this hey. lovely woman sing. I yes. work in the Gables, live in Plantation, got home about 5 o'clock. And she says, we better get going. we got to go see. we got to have everyone's going to oh, dinner. I said, they're going to cancel the concert. You know, they're going to cancel it. Right. She says, no, no, they, we got to go out. To, finally, at 630, I have to make a management decision to either die from stress or go out and die from uh, being electrocuted or drowned right. or the wind or what have you. Right. So I braved the elements. I'm on my way up. And I'm saying to myself, I can't believe I'm going to see this bitch vibrate her ovaries. <laughs> and we get up there, I'm stuck in the water, the car is rocking all over the place. I put the radio on to see if there's any kind of an announcement, and all I hear is, we got a shot to these specials. <laughs> and that did it for me. I just said, screw it, I'm going home, and that's it. And I haven't right. talked to her since. Nice going, pal. Bye. And by the way, they have this new non-traceable arsenic. You can buy it in the uh, supermarket. It's great. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty. <laughs> we got a shot. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. All the Merino bashers, they're in the feet. I heard one stupid call this morning. They hung up on him right away. Nice call there, Beefo. All the Merino bashers, they're in, in seventh heaven now. Wait till this kid starts one game and they get the crap beat out of him and he gets sacked another nine, ten, twelve times. And they'll say, "Oh gee, where's Danny? When's he coming back?" Phonies, baby, phonies, ingrates. Not as bad as the fans in Philadelphia, but then who the hell is? That thing with Michael Irvin and the Philly fans booing and carrying on and cheering the fact that, I mean, just crazy people. There's my friend Ron from Philly who gives me that big check for the uh, center one every year. He's a great guy, big hockey fan, Flyers and the Panthers. He's a good guy. Other than that, Philadelphia, is there any any good people there? No. No, just Ron. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil, how are you? Pretty good, sir. Theory on why Jews drive those big Cadillacs, and I got this from a car dealer. Oy. Before you had the uh, big luxury Japanese cars, your choice was German and American. So that's why they chose the uh, the Cadillac over anything that was German made. Mm -hmm. That's my uh, that's that's a theory. Anyway, my question and the reason for my What's call. What's wrong with a nice Chevy Bel Air? What was wrong with that? In Impala. Nice, uh, Seventy two Cadillac Fleetwood convertible two door. Yeah. Canary yellow white top. How about a Henry uh, J? Remember, remember Henry J. It's before your time. Way before my time. Direct, Direct TV Center. If you buy that, do all the other channels become available also as far as like the sports channels? No. When they show hockey? Because now I can, I, now I can view hockey on 740 or whatever number it's right, on. Right. Plus Sports Channel New York and all the others. Right. If I wouldn't have bought it, would those channels have been blacked out? I don't understand. I mean, the, the the other channels are part. I'm trying to remember because I bought the basic package and I just renew it every year. Isn't, aren't the other channels part of the basic package, or not? I guess no, not. Um, well, I, I no, they're part of like some sports some sports package. Mm -hmm. But I bought Center Ice thinking that I couldn't see any NHL games, but all the games are duplicated on other channels. No, no, no. Channels. But if you don't have the Center Ice, you, they will. They'll, you you won't get them on those other channels. You'll lose okay. Them. That's that that was my, trust me. That was they're not that question. stupid. You'll just you'll get blacked okay. out. Okay, well, I got uh, plenty of hockey now, and I had to give up my uh, Panther season tickets because uh, too far to drive and just way too expensive for a Porsche look like me. Okay, I got you. Thanks, Bill. See ya. See ya. Five six seven oh five sixty Palm five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Oh, 
If anybody would have told me three hours ago, three hours exactly uh, passed, then I would be sitting here now at one twenty, uh, one in the afternoon. I'd have said, yeah, sure. Just another un- – just keep throwing those obstacles in front of us, Greg. We ought to be getting gigantic bonuses just for hopping over the hoops. That's not in my contract. I don't know about anybody else. Bet you a lot of people pay a lot of money to see me and Hank hop over hoops. Here's a Kendall. Hello. Hey. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Wait, next just to you. change the subject for a little bit here, did you read about our uh, one of our school board members here in Miami? You don't mean Demetrio Perez yes. there with his two guns? That same guy. At the airport. The yeah, guy the that, one that wants the guy to that wants to put machine. the metal detectors in the schools. So he wants to make sure that the airport ones work real good. Did you hear what his coworkers said? Uh, Sabades. She said, "Why did you wait two weeks to tell everybody? Because there's a reporter that found out about you." <laughs> yeah, the investigation. He's, he's turning this thing around. Why wait two weeks and then hold a press conference after a reporter asks about it, then use the signature campaign to hide behind it? Nice That's calling the there, sweetheart. Is, uh, Neil, what, what I'm asking is this. Here's the penalty. One, he can go to gun school. Two, he can go to 60 days in jail. That's, yeah. that's the severe part. Well, you know where he'll be going, don't you? Gun he'll school. Be going to, to school. And he'll probably put metal detectors into the gun school, too. <laughs> Have a great day, pal. See ya. Yeah, there you go. He can elope with Barry Swisher, okay? They like to take their guns to the airport. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's the Miami Lakes. Hello. Nice talking to you. Have a great life. Try uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. I got two small reports on you about the hurricane. Uh, yeah. one, actually, one about the hurricane. Did you see uh, Al Sunshine? Did you hear about him? No. No. Well, this time, you know, rather than yelling I know at one me, thing about him. He's an asshole. Well, that's for sure. You know, that was apparent, too. But I was flipping through the channels, and I actually saw him on there. So I wanted to see what he was doing in this report. And uh, this time he was testing out umbrellas. And he was testing out, like, the $70 umbrellas and the, like, <laughs> five, cheap five ten dollar ones. Yeah. And it was so great because then he, uh, you know, he tested it out and the thing, he would like turn it both ways to see if it would flip inside and out. And I was hoping number and the one. Umbrella too, yeah. Yeah, well, I was hoping number one that it would, you know, his his fat butt would, you know, get picked up in the hurricane. If not, you know, but then the best one was that he was saying, oh, these seventy dollar ones are great and stuff like that, and the thing broke on him. <laughs> all right, excellent. And uh, that's the best news I heard all year. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. What a major ham hock waving asshole he is. Yeah, and number two was about two weeks ago, you know, on your station there of uh, Power 96 and everything, there's yeah. like this this uh, contest and everything like that. And it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'm driving to school. And I hear some lady calling. She's driving a school bus, and she's playing a contest. And she's got kids on the bus, and she's calling him. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, really. You know? No, no, she's doing and, right. And she, so- she'd be calling in. <laughs> Uh, she, she was ethnic. That's definitely no question true. about it. And uh, you know, Bo was asking, "Hey, yeah, you know, I'm glad you're calling in and everything like that. Like you've got nothing else better to do." Well, you know, it's nice to see though that after all these years, the tremendous uh, progress that blacks are making in America. Aunt your mom, instead of flipping a pancake, she's driving school buses now. Well, at least she had a mobile phone then. There that's, again, that's and progress. has a cell phone too. Okay, pal. Right, Thanks for the good news. <laughs> nice going, Aunt your mama. Yes. Oh, my head is just splitting from this place. It's just splitting from here. Like like somebody took that gigantic OJ knife that we have sitting over there. It's tempting. I might sharpen that baby up for tomorrow. Here's Loxahatchee. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. This deserves a... You must be crazy. You must be nuts. Yeah. Well, you know how far Coral Sky is, right, from you? I sure do. A long piece, a fur piece. I'm 20 to 25 minutes west of there, okay? Yeah. I have some family members that drove down to Bette Midler Friday night in the hurricane. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? No, not really. How? Why would you risk your life? To see that bitch. Yeah. Can you imagine driving down the turnpike 65, I, you know, I can't. I can't think of any performer in the world that I would risk in any kind of weather to to uh, to uh, you know drive and take my life in my hands for. It. What What's the point? Even even my mother, I'd have to give her a phone call. Say, Mom, see you tomorrow. Unbelievable. All right, Neil. Okay, thanks. See you. Yeah, see you tomorrow, Mom. Not. Oh, by the way, speaking of your mother, I got news for her. Nobody in the world. You, your mother isn't in the same category with my mother. George and I are going to have a contest to see who is the biggest unrelenting bitch of them all. No, seriously. Let's give them one of those knives each and see. You know, every Wednesday, it used to be Tuesdays, now it's Wednesdays, I go to my mother's for lunch, which I'm not going tomorrow for reasons you'll understand momentarily. Plus, I don't feel all that great, but nevertheless. And she always has to make a big, this is lunch. This isn't like dinner for 20 people. It's her and me. It's got to be 10 courses. There's got to be all these vegetables. There's got to be this. And there's got scallops and meatballs. I mean, it's always good. She's a great cook. But 
and I've said to her a million times, why do you have to make so many things? She keeps bringing out, bring, oh, only eat what you want, only eat what you want, nothing ever gets thrown out. So while I'm away, of course, she calls the house and I'm not there, so John picks up the phone and she, uh, and I already told her I was uh, taking off and going up to Toronto for the weekend. Well, I didn't know how come I wasn't home yet after work. And I went right to the airport. During the course of this accidental conversation, well, you know, he comes over here every week and eats so much food. You've never seen anybody eat so much food in your life. And then I give him stuff to take home, and I know he takes it home and eats it the same day. Not to mention that my little dog who's at the vet sick with a little, but he's, he'll be all right. But uh, I mentioned this there. Well, he was sick before you left. No, he wasn't sick before I left. But you see, dig, 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 and twist, and just turn, and... See, my mother has a philosophy in life. If you can't say something bad about somebody, don't say anything at all. I was rifling through his garbage, rummaging through the garbage, and found a Snickers wrapper, Fat Rich. She's telling this to Fat Rich, who, by the way, I think just hit 600 pounds again last week at the track with that 18th piece of lasagna. Nice going, Richie. It's been nice knowing. I asked him, I said, what kind of flowers do you want me to bring to your funeral? 27 after 1 at 560 WQM. To your mother also. Down in Jamaica in the Caribbean, they got the best herb that you ever seen. Ask anybody in that neighborhood, they tell you this the country where the country be good. Rasta man has some he want to sell, and from a mile away you can detect the smell of smoke. Smoke, can't you smoke, smoke. He lights up the spliff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. You can carry lots of herb in the gunny sack. Smoke it every day until your lungs turn black. With all the money that we have made. Jamaica doesn't need any foreign aid. American tourists come here and say, got nothing like this in the USA. They smoke, smoke, guns to smoke, smoke. They light up the spliff and choke. They begin to puff and choke. Smoke, guns to smoke, smoke. Okay. Yeah. Mama tells her son you are a Rasta man. You like to smoke the giant slip whenever you can. Many people coming here from miles around to buy the earth from you by the ounce of the pound. Rasta man say to her, Mama, you right. The ganja be good tonight. And then they smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. They light up the spliff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. Yes. All right. Come on. 134 at 560 WQM. I mean, what kind of an asshole would go in a pouring rain to watch any performers? It would be like going up to the Coral Sky Amphitheater to see the Backstreet Boys and getting poured on last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was that jackass Woody Graber who never gave us any advance warning, much less a poncho, and seats about 20 miles away. Nice going, Woody. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. I got to tell you a couple of hurricane stories. I got to set this one up for you. First, I want to give Bill Kamal credit. He was flying around the, the weather station there, yeah. hedging that there was a hurricane coming. But it's like he didn't want to contradict the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he was right on the edge. He had his toe right on the edge of the closet door. Yes, he did. Uh huh. The other thing is, I'm coming into work in the morning, okay, in Hollywood, and I see a Channel 7 news truck in a parking lot facing a 7-Eleven. Yeah. And the reporter is out there, and they're setting up. So I rush into the office, and I turn on Channel 7. Now, bear in mind, this particular parking lot has a 7-Eleven, a pizza shop, and a laundromat. That's mm -hmm. all that's in there. Right. If it drizzles, 
this parking lot floods. Yeah. It always did. When I'm coming in, there's no floods on the street. I mean, it was like, it's, this is 9 o'clock in the morning, man. It was like uh, a regular summer rain, you know, no big deal. All of a sudden, the station comes on the air. The reporter gets on. Here I am in Hollywood, and we can show you how this parking lot is completely flooded at the strip mall. <laughs> Oy. You talk about no credibility. Yeah. A strip mall for a pizza joint. What a shock. And they had the camera pointed into the one end where there's a giant pothole that always floods. That's Channel 7. If anybody can find it, they're the ones. Oy. I was waiting for Rick Sanchez to come out and squat on a parking lot. I mean, they they showed this Better clip. watch, you might drop something in there. <laughs> yeah, finally they went over to the beach and did something, you know, and showed the little waves over there because yeah. there was nothing going on at 9 o'clock in the morning. Thanks for the good news. Take care. They may not be good, but at least they're consistent. Oh, yeah. Thanks. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560. Hey, boy, what's that in your mouth? On the AT&T wireless line. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I used to listen to you when uh, you were when the bird was with you. Yeah. Back in the days. I haven't called you in a long time. But I heard somebody say you had white-footed ants. That's what he said. And I have white-footed uncles, too, by the way. <laughs> well, I can get rid of them for you if you want. No. How does how does this guy know I have white-footed ants? I mean, over the phone, this guy is diagnosing my ants. Well, that's what the other guy said. Yeah, they that's might not what he be. said. Huh? They might not be white-footed ants, but well, if they are, are what, I have what, an exterminating company. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to give my buddy Phil one more chance. Yeah. Or else you can call me offline. Okay. Give give George your number. Because Phil uh, shows up on every... And, what uh, the what the hell was that? What was that? What? You didn't feel that or hear that? Hang on, sir. You didn't just feel that thud? I heard a little thud. A little thud? I thought you were tapping your foot. Uh, talk to this uh, ant, this ant guy. What the hell was that? It just uh, felt like the whole uh, roof was caving in here. Somebody's thudding on something out there. Jesus Christ! I got to get out of this building. Got only 23 more minutes. That's that's the office pool. Will they survive alive? Get out of here today. Crazy place. These are crazy people here. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a lady in Tamarack. Hello. Hi there. Yes, ma'am. I was one of those idiots that drove out to the stadium. Oh, my here. God. Wow. Um, you know, $200 worth of tickets. My daughter and I got in the car. We yeah. braved it. We went out there to get a half a block from the stadium, and they canceled. And I had her call on the cell phone to call the recording to see what they were saying at that point. And they said that it was still a go. And that recording stayed on that phone until 5 after 8. Nice. Until 5 after 8. 5 after 8. Very nice. I mean, you know, I, we went... I had seen her on a lot of talk shows, and I felt she was a better person than that. But in truth... She's a bitch. She's a bitch. Right. So, because uh, if you read the Sun Sentinel today, it Which said I it was did. all her. Right. And, yeah, and it really surprised me when I read that. You know, I thought it was a promoter okay. or then, whatever. Then they, she, wa she wanted them to uh, move the Panther game from Saturday yes. to Sunday so she could perform on Saturday. Yes, that's an ego. And then... Dr. Wolf, uh, i got to get off. Yeah, and then the performance was... Okay, I've seen better. Share was much better. Right. But um, she never didn't even apologize. You know, and and just one little apology for making you know, or or a thank you. Right. For the the two thousand people that got out on the street and braved the hurricane to come see her, but no mention, no mention, right. no mention. You won't do that again. Never. Okay, thanks. Uh huh. Bye. Bye. How do you like that ungrateful sow? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless. Now, that's a great word, by the way. We don't use enough sow. I love that word. Wasn't that a very popular word in The Exorcist, I think? Uh -huh. Sal? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line, 21 before 2. Hank will be at the Cool City this afternoon. Oh, Alonzo, you're so big. And now, a fun fact from Ass. If you've ever wondered why Uranus was kind of brown looking, it's because it's very gaseous. And the dust particles around it tend to congeal within the gas and give it that dark hue. Another little known fact about Uranus is that it too has many thin rings around it. It's also the only planet in our solar system that spins on a reverse axis, probably due to a large celestial collision billions of years ago. This fun fact has been brought to you by the Astrological Society of Scientists. Why? Well, what the hell do you think we were talking about? Well, that's gross. Rectum. Okay, 16 till 2 at 560 WQM. Don't forget, no pizza loft appearance tonight. It'll be next Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m. And the good news is that the revised and upgraded and better sounding and uh, kosher uh, 
Best and CDs will be in specs uh, starting this afternoon in Dade and Broward. And very, very soon over in Fort Myers and in Palm Beach County, wherever else so we can get them. Oh, man. Uh, where are we going? Let's go to <laughs> everything here is a project, baby. Things that other people can do rolling out, like rolling out of bed in the morning, is a major project here at QAM. It's the QAM F and Way because they just don't get it. Here's Miami Lakes. Hello. Speaking of Uranus, there's an article in the Miami Herald today about Back them. Yes. The Ricky Files, all about everything you always wanted to know about Ricky Martin. There's only one thing I want to know. When is he going to go away already? But they never mention the word homo or gay. Really? They do mention that he nearly got married. Oh, yeah. And they don't mention he was getting a ring and he was nearly married, but they don't mention what sex. They didn't mention where they were putting the ring. Wrecked him. And they, he wants to have 20 kids. Uh-huh. Little boys, I well, would Well, Michael imagine. Jackson uh, probably had at least that many. Yeah. Well, Look. anyway, it's the Miami Herald, accurate again. They never, they do a whole article about him, and they say it's everything you always wanted to know. Oh, yeah. That was the, the first the thing I wanted scoop. to know. Exactly. Believe me, you don't want to know. Have a great day. <laughs> you don't want to know. Five, six, seven. Like I said before, I've told you this a million times. He's way up there on top now, but he says he still likes it much better down there on the bottom. That's what I hear. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. So let's uh, take the votes today. The most hateful mother in the world, spiteful, vicious, vindictive, backstabbing, fault finding. But at least yours can cook. Oh boy. Yeah, but yeah, I'm eating all that food, eating so much food there every week. You ought to see it. And then he takes some home, and I bet you he's eating it. No, I take it home to put it up on a mantelpiece. If I had a mantel, which I don't, I put it up on a mantel. And say, oh, look, here's some stale meatballs that Ma cooked. Boy, they were good originally. Or maybe her head up on the mantelpiece would look pretty good. Here's a lady in the Miami. Hello. Lady in Miami. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I have to tell you, um, well, I've listened to you since long before the birds. Right. And I've been to California and back, but I had successfully not listened to more than three seconds of a Ricky Martin song until today. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I hope it never happens again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll try to avoid it as much as possible. Please. Thank you. Now, what's the name of that uh, stupid thing? I, I could never find it because I don't know what the hell he called that thing. Thank you. It's got a different version on the uh, Best of Neil. Oh, does it? Is that yeah. the one where it says Matty Corn? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Can't wait to hear all these people. Oh, Danny, we told you he stuck this kid here. Right? Yeah, right. Bunch of ungrateful, obnoxious, disgusting, phony so-called sports fans. Man, what passes for sports talk in this town? Wouldn't even pass for <coughs> gas in most places in the civilized world. I'll tell you that. It's a joke. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How's it going, man? Okay, sir. I'm glad uh, you had that thud in your... Uh your building today because I was in Vegas over the weekend. Yeah. And there was uh there was an earthquake out in the desert there. Right. And it just rocked the hotel we were in. What what I mean, hotel it, were you in? I was in a hard rock hotel. Right. And well, you got uh, a hard rock all, for your money anyway. Yeah, right. First of all, Vegas is everything you said it was. Yes it, it is. We had the best time. We stayed for five days. We lost money. We didn't care. We ate great. Uh you know, I, the the city of Miami and Fort Lauderdale could get a you know a good lesson on how to show people a good time, right? Uh, keep people, you know, with things to do. Uh, the service was great everywhere we went, and it's just a great place to go. And, uh, you know... Uh, and if, let there. me ask you this. If casino gambling is so evil, like our two newspapers are always lecturing us about, if it's so evil, and how come it's so much fun out there and such a drag yeah. here? And you know, I mean, if you don't want to gamble, don't gamble. Right. It's real simple. You know, I like gambling, so I'm going to gamble. Plenty of other things um, to do. We had a great time. Uh, it was about... Three in the morning, Friday night, and uh, I had gone upstairs. I wanted to lay down for a little while, and geez, it was unbelievable. That hotel just started swaying back and forth, and the next day, you know, everybody was telling them, you know, stories about where they were, and and uh, it was just a good thing. It was, uh, it was uh, about like 150 seven, 7. miles away. 7.1 on the Richter scale. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was, uh, you know, even the, the the guys working in the hotel were telling us they'd never felt anything like that out there. So it was uh it was really cool. I wanted to let you know that uh we had a great time and uh uh it was great. Excellent. Uh, we missed we missed the we missed the hurricane but we had an earthquake. Well, one out of two ain't bad. Yeah, right. Glad you had a good Take time. It easy. Go Panthers. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I'm gagging over here. Uh, it's eleven before two. Now I feel better at QAM. 